welcome to session number 20! Ah! Yeah! Oh, wow. Ooh. Yeah, I we've... Even realize we're on session 20. Wow, we've been at this for a while. We have... Damn, when when did we start That's... this? Like, in, 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 in real life, what day? When was it? Uh... Let's Let me see. check the schedule and scroll up. Uh, it was all the way in April. Session one, July twenty fifth <laughs> was session one. Oh, it was in July. Whoops. In <clears throat> half a year. That means we're a fifth of the way done. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I like. I worriedly <laughs> glanced at my screen. Like, am I live streaming my notes? How does? <laughs> did he? <laughs> Are you looking at my things? <laughs> I yeah, mean, if we're going every based on our track record. <laughs> yeah, I have like every... All, all 100. Yep, that's why <laughs> I am so prepared all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very glad to to have all of you at least at the start. <clears throat> at the start. Um, Austin will have to leave at some point. So let's get right to it. Um, what are we doing, Austin? <laughs> oh, I mean, uh, listen... I could totally whip out a, a great impromptu summary, <laughs> if you want. But you've already written something, haven't you, Winter? I want <laughs> to hear the summary in the voice of Mortimer the Third. That's a great, because I was already planning on that. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> this is Who's Mortimer the same Third? Same wavelength. <laughs> Who? 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 You ask? Who? <laughs> Well, it's me, Mortimer the Third, the grandest owl in all of Ladaria. So, besides Bulvan. Well, <laughs> so this is the story of Session Nineteen of the Outlander's Guide to Ladaria. That's right. I am a fourth wall breaking owl. <laughs> <laughs> you have milk that intro by time. All owls are. <laughs> <laughs> all owls are. Last we left off, <coughs> our, our intrepid adventurers were heading to the city of... Aria. Aria. <coughs> I'm a bit old, <laughs> me, Mortimer. <laughs> and uh, as they were heading to Aria, Talix received a leaf floating in the breeze. And, and on this leaf was the word hide. And so they did. They hid near a tree where I was perched, my claws uh, uh, nicely uh, on the branch, and I watched them when a little child <coughs> called out to me asking for help. And so I swooped down there and and they, they had me go and look around in this, this city called Aria. And I didn't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> Everything was fine. And so I, I came back and and their friend gave me some beef jerky and I gave him a scratch and made sure it hurt. <laughs> and uh, and I kept watching, which is how I know the rest of what happened. <laughs> and so uh, Brooke, Tekka, and, and uh, Pip went down into the city to see what was going on. They went to the chapel of the possum where they met with uh, a, a, a pale, tall man there by the name of they didn't know it yet. <laughs> and and then uh, they they well, they knew it. They went there to to talk to Inwild, uh, Twilight Sun. Uh, who, 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 Talix said was a very powerful cleric. And, and so Pip pretended to be sick, and they did this whole deception mission to get Inwild to come down and heal Pip. And then Inwild uh, took them on a tour that wasn't actually a tour because Inwild wanted to get them into a private area, which he did. And in this private area, they discussed things about. Uh, how Talix was in a lot of danger because uh, because the fox died. Um, this fox god of Plurna uh, had seemingly passed away, and uh, the last person to uh, to uh, 
I need help. <laughs> Gul Borgok, the arch cleric. Gul Borgok. Yeah. Was the, the arch cleric of the fox who Talix had a close connection to and was the last person to talk to her about stuff before the fox died. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Good enough. I None of us really nothing, know. Guys. None of us really know. <laughs> I didn't even know I would be here. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then, then what happened? Uh, that is the question. <laughs> um, the question is what Mortimer does the saw fox mouse. say? And, uh, <laughs> and then Mortimer saw a mouse and had to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, since yeah, well, since Mortimer was uh, was busy uh, at that point. Uh, yes, what followed was uh, a plan to arrange a meeting between Enwild and Talix that would take place outside of the colony, possibly, um, hopefully, away from the eyes and ears of the Pale Man, who was Baryon Thar, the Arch Cleric of the Fairy Dragon. As an Arch Cleric, he's a, a member of the Jade Council, the highest authority of just its, the main religion of Polorna. And he, um, <clears throat> as they later learned, he was there specifically to meet, uh, to find Talix and speak with him. So with the meeting between en Enwild and Talix arranged, Enwild uh, snuck out of the colony at a later time uh, in the middle of the night and managed to uh, meet with a party and speak with Talix and inform him of the situation with the fox uh, um, being dead and an investigation uh, being led by the Jade Council on um, what happened, who is responsible, and uh, the Arch Cleric of the Fox, uh, Gulg Borgak herself, is uh, the one who is uh, uh, currently uh, being held and suspected of having uh, uh, killed the Fox with her own hands. Uh, and yeah. Talix uh, is uh, uh, being sought by the council, and Enwild was trying to protect him by keeping him away from the from the colony, uh, at least for the time being. And he told him uh, uh, he had to choose whether to go to Arya and speak with Baryon and uh, uh, let himself be interrogated with a possible <clears throat> danger to it, or um, avoid uh, the colony. Uh, <laughs> avoid a colony and possibly never return and avoid also any future interaction with the Jade Council and anyone working for it. Uh, the decision was made to go away from Arya and uh, uh, avoid the Baryon. And so that's what you guys did. You traveled through the night it was exhausting. Um, you found a refuge in a little cave uh, at the break of dawn, and uh, um, that's where you slept. Now, um, one thing that I wanted to bring up with uh, Matt was the matter of Pontifex's dream. Um, I was wondering, did Pontifex end up uh, sharing that with, with anyone? Uh, he did in just last session. Well, hold on. You're referring to which which one actually? The, um, the original the one from one a while that ago. Involved no, Talix, the one that occurred one? in the cave. The uh, one read the book. Um. Hmm. I don't think he did. Okay, because uh, you didn't like it during the session, but uh. Yeah, no. That's just what so. I wanted to double check. Okay. Um, Pontifex had... Uh, sorry, back to <laughs> recap. Uh, Pontifex had uh, a, um, a divine uh, dream, one in which his deity, the goat, uh, spoke directly to him, delivering a message from Vakanath and one from himself. Uh, the message from Vakanath being about the importance uh, to... Uh, protect the seed in Talix's possession, and a message from himself being to, um, in contrast to the one he delivered from Vakanath, was to simply um, encourage Pontifex and uh, uh, the rest of the party to make their own decisions. Mm -hmm. um, 
We left the last session with the party uh, setting off again towards... Uh, you're heading west, southwest, uh, trying to get to the uh, to the sea where you hope to find to catch a boat uh, uh, to go all the way to Simlielon. Uh, and you had just come across a group of elves um, in the middle of uh, uh, some kind of excavation. I... <sighs> appear to have managed to misplace my inspiration I, die. No, I don't want it. I do that a lot. <laughs> well, I don't well, deserve it. Well, you're not Wait. getting it anyway. It's going to someone else of your choice. So, uh... Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. It needs to be a little smaller. Is that Pip willingly handing over a rock? <laughs> <laughs> I see how it is. It's Austin, red-faced and shame, <laughs> giving away this. Well, you thought failure. you were, you thought you weren't gonna even be here. Hold on, <laughs> stop moving it. Oh. All right, now you can move it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you had to make a copy. Yes, I was chasing it all over the table. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it to Dennis, cause again. Yeah. Cause you, you got a oh. while before you get one, buddy. Cause you. You go through these things, man. <laughs> <laughs> you roll like shit, man. <laughs> you you blow through inspiration dies like they're candy. There should be a counter on how many inspiration dice everyone actually used. <laughs> <laughs> Your tank role play with Talix was really cute. Yeah, yes. That's true. Oh yes. Thank <laughs> really you. Cute. I was gonna bring it up, but I forgot. Uh, something else took place off screen. Um. So outside of the actual session, uh, Brooks and uh, Brook and Alex had uh, a little chat, a little heart to heart, and it ended with Talix entrusting the precious seed of Akanath into Brook's hands. Yep. Yep. And uh, Dennis has given me no reason to worry about that at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, in the moment. Uh, Alex did it uh, as, a, as a token of uh, of trust. He said that, uh, well, the rest of the party hasn't heard this yet, but he said that he <laughs> wants it to be something entrusted to the group and not just him as an individual. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I made that joke earlier. Brooke was going to be eating a huge piece of popcorn. <laughs> 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 Candied God. Ah, all right. Very lean, Valkanoth. Uh, <laughs> Talix had just run ahead uh, um, and was uh, uh, trying to communicate with these elves in in, in Elvish, uh, trying to uh, they, trying to let them know that there was no reason to panic, as the the group of elves had started to uh, panicedly. Uh, start packing up their things as soon as they had spotted people approaching. Uh, but after declaring that uh, um, they are not here to cause any trouble, uh, the group uh, uh, calmed down and stopped packing things up. And now uh, you all stand in front of uh, one elven woman. <clears throat> um... Is everybody approaching? I know Talix is already like, I'm, like I'm ran there. ahead. Yeah. yeah. Of course I'm approaching. These are my people. <laughs> All right. If it's my people, I'll approach too. <laughs> Guys, don't leave Tekka behind. <laughs> All right. I'll drag him along. <laughs> Tekka, Tekka and Pip were approaching together, just behind yeah. everyone Yeah. Yeah. Slow pace. All right. Um. Uh, the the woman is just in the middle of like, uh, just introducing herself to to uh, Talix. Her name is uh, Kirla Leosatra. Um, and she just sort of like gestures at uh, the rest of the group uh, behind her, and like she's she's like about to uh, say something else, but then she like takes a better look at Talix and uh, um. Talix, I'll, I'll need a little insight check. 
Just a little? A little insight? Yeah. For a, a little small insight one, check. Um, Make a recognized you... racism. I am. Are you, um... I am. Exhausted? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Second roll is a zero. <laughs> there you go. Why is it not letting me do it? It's resetting every time. Are there oh issues God. with dice? It, it's resetting as soon as I hit roll. It resets as soon as I start the roll. What on earth is that? Right? Success. Okay. Okay. Nine. Okay. Um... Right. Um, whatever, like she was just about to say, uh, she seems to uh, just uh, decide uh, against it. Um, I'll, and I'll then, go ahead and oh, hmm? go ahead. sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I lost my train of thoughts. No. <laughs> Uh, Talix Moyer, uh, pleasure to meet you. Uh, might I ask, is, what are we looking at here? Uh, I'm going to look around and kind of ask out loud, is this Lodarian? Like, what what are they digging up right now? Can I see? Uh, yeah. Um, you can basically see little... The very basic perimeter of what must have been uh, um, various houses from a really long time ago. There's, uh, you can't really call them houses now because uh, there is hardly anything left behind, but you can see like the, the, the base, uh, the, the, the stones at the very bottom of the buildings uh, that uh, uh, are still there, so you can sort of like tell where certain houses used to be and where there was uh, a little well over there that is now collapsed. Um, and the most of them are gathered uh, a bit further away from these uh, from these ruins, and they are um, some of them are inside of a small hole, and the others are like sort of like gathered around. Sorry, what what is gathered around? Uh, the others, uh, there is about a dozen of these people. Oh, the people, okay. Mm -hmm. I thought we were talking about this, the bricks or something. Sorry. Right. Um, any chance any of this would look similar to anything I've seen before? Like maybe the temple we were at, or... Any... I don't know if Talix has encountered a lot of... And I kind of said he did, but I, I really don't know if that's appropriate that he's encountered a lot well, of the Dorian rooms. Yeah, and um, about him. I feel like he would have. A, these feel like, um, at least at a glance from where you are and from what you're seeing, these feel a little um, um, not too exciting. Uh, in the sense that really not much seems to be left at all. Uh, certainly, no, like. Um, like, if the buildings have not survived it this long, most of the things uh, also absolutely wouldn't have. So you can't imagine that there would be a lot here left to be found. Uh, still, Oh, this I... is exciting. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, what do we what do we know about these people? Uh, any artifacts recovered? Uh, and as the rest of the party approaches, uh, uh, Kila still seem, seems to be hesitating a little bit. He just looks at Pontifex, looks at Pape, looks back at Talix and says, You're sure you're not with Arya? Oh. Here, let me show you some of my research notes. I'll, I'll uh, get out my book and show notes I have of any similar... Uh, uh, Ludarian artifacts or ruins. What language like are they speaking? Oh, we've been speaking Elvish, I believe. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, once everyone else gets in here, uh, Talix will realize and <clears throat> introduce you in common. This is Kirla. Uh, Kirla, this is the. Oh, uh, sorry. Do you speak common? Uh, yes. No, uh, Plurnan. I Plurnan. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, my associate, 
uh, my mentor, uh, Professor Hans, uh, I'll introduce yourself. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Pontifex Vastalus Alenach. Uh, I live in uh, Eleonarden. Nice to meet you. Kirla looks down at uh, your holy symbol and then back uh, at you, um, <laughs> and she says, Really? In Elinor? Uh, yes. I have uh, lived there for, uh, uh, without consulting my notes, I think it's close to about a century. <laughs> Maybe longer. Uh, yeah, okay. <clears throat> she just seems to like accept the um the claim um without really uh, pushing for it mm, half a century sorry okay <laughs> <laughs> alex is now shoving his journal in her face uh, <laughs> showing her showing her all of the all of the notes that he has on the dorian ruins and showing her samples of artifacts the yeah the rest of the the introduction of the rest of the party is interrupted uh, as uh, uh yeah this, <laughs> this one is pretty notes. much yeah <laughs> just into her face uh and she she takes a look and she um after a few after a few seconds uh, uh almost a minute of just looking at these she looks up at him and says ah, you know what um how long have you been on Lidaria? Well, uh, altogether, it's been about what did I say? Six, whatever, whatever it was, six years. I think it oh. was six. Where have you lived? <laughs> well, mostly around, <laughs> mostly around Doria. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> the was was wait for that one. The bomb to drop. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly around here, yeah, around Doria. But uh, recently, I've been traveling all around. Have you, have you been to see to see Milielon, uh, at all? Oh uh, yes. In fact, we most recently came through uh, from there. And we're heading back there now. Ah, uh, perfect. Then, uh, tell you what, um, this, and she, like, hands back, uh, your notes, um, is actually quite fascinating. Do you work for, uh, for any, and, like, she glances back <laughs> at your holy symbol and then back at your face, and, um, uh, she seems put off, but then she says, do you work for any company? Alex, uh, isn't actually wearing a holy symbol. Never mind. He has the uh, the amber uh, piece in his pouch, and he was wearing the seed, but not anymore. Right. Okay. So she asks <laughs> if you work for any company. Um. Well, I was. Until recently. Uh, kind of in a weird spot, but uh, I'm still trying to work that out. Then, um, uh, tell you what, if um, if you end up in, in Simli alone any, any time uh, uh, in the near future, um, we got this new thing going. And again, she sort of like gestures at herself and the rest of the group. Um, a bit of a... Uh, uh, Newer company, so to speak. Uh, it's uh, the Silver Claw, and since you seem to be uh, quite passionate about uh, the same things we are, uh, maybe you'd like to join us. Oh, uh, just um, check it out. Is... Um, maybe let okay. your father know about it too. Oh, my father. Uh, I, you are the son of Arin, right? Have you, have you been in contact with him? Oh, in Alex, contact, uh, His not... expression has very much changed. So Same with Pontifex. <laughs> very, 
very intensely focused. Uh, well, I haven't spoken to him in over ten years, but uh, I figured you did. Ah, uh, well, I was hoping I might find him, and uh, well, it's good to know that you know him. Yeah, we've we were colleagues for a while, uh, about twelve years ago or so. Any chance you've heard from him since he's been in Ladaria? Well, that's uh, uh, it is where we met. But again, that was really? that was twelve years ago. We worked together for about two. Um, then he set off to do his own thing. You know whereabouts he went. Uh, all I know is that he wanted to take his work outside of the peninsula. It was like uh, everything we did here. It, uh, he never seemed quite satisfied with it. Like he was. Well, uh, that's really all I know. We weren't really close friends, more like, uh, you know, co workers. I understand. Oh, thank you so much. Uh... Yeah. Uh, if you do find him, do let him know that we, we got this thing going and uh, he, would, <clears throat> he would be a great asset if he wanted to join us. Well, I certainly will, but uh, if you don't mind in the meantime, uh, I might look into it myself. We'll be in Simlilan very, very shortly. Hopefully. Well, we're heading straight <clears throat> there. Uh, you're headed the wrong way if you're headed straight to Simlilan. Well, we figured the water would be the best way to get there. Do you know of a better way? Um... She just, like, looks at your group and, uh, uh... Has dates for a moment, seems to be thinking about it, and says... Ah... Uh, well... Tell you what, um... The... The uh, you're you're headed for the port, right? That's right. I, I imagine that the, is the, plan. the ship uh, that takes that transports people between Arya and Simlielon is uh, not going to come for another uh, for another two weeks until the end, uh, the start of the next month. But uh, if uh, if you let Durok know that uh, um, that I sent you, he she'll still let you on a smaller uh, boat. It will be comfortable. Durok. Durok. Durok, of course. Right. <clears throat> well, thank you for that information. That should be of great use. Uh, wait, Tekka! Tekka, is Tekka here? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> How slowly was he walking? <laughs> In a manner that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> He's already he straight moon walking the whole time. <laughs> so <he's on. laughs> uh, what is it, Talix? Well, I was wondering uh, if you'd like to meet these people. Mm. These people? What do you mean? Uh, well, have you interacted with elves before? Hmm. No. Is that important for our travel? <laughs> well, it is where we're heading. <laughs> <laughs> Then Tekka will just sort of look over to Kirla and wave. Slowly. <laughs> <laughs> Tra traveling companion, he's a, he's a very interesting fellow. I love Tekka so much. 
uh, and everyone else. Here, here's Pip. Uh, he's colonial-born boy. Uh, he's picking weeds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brooke, perhaps you'd like to <laughs> talk? Uh, hello. And I would say <laughs> that in Elvish as well. Oh, I didn't know Brooke's. <clears throat> Uh, she waves at Tekka, um, tries to wave at Pip, who doesn't seem to notice. Uh, um, and then, then she uh, smiles at Brooke, and uh, uh, in, in Elvish also uh, just says hello. Um, and she... <laughs> uh, hold on a second, let me see this. Alright. Um... Glancing between Tekka and Talix, she chuckles a little and says, If you'd like, I could take you to meet the rest of the group, but, um... Just a word of warning for uh, you, uh... Tekka. Um... Nerindam, that's uh, that guy over there with the uh, very long black hair, um... He can be... Uh, how do I put it? It's a little... Uh, a lot. Um, don't don't take offense. He just really likes some um, people. <clears throat> uh, is there anything you want in return for basically bringing us over the water? Well, that's really just a uh, Durox uh, uh, job. Uh, uh, all I can do is point you in the right direction and uh, let you go. But if you guys have a minute, I would love to keep a browsing through um, Talix's notes. Certainly. You have apparently saved us weeks of time, so... Of course. Yep, Talix will be happy to do that. I don't know if anyone else wants to do anything in the meantime. <clears throat> Then we will speak with your group. And Tekka begins heading off towards that hole, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Kira will just come with, like, just to briefly introduce uh, everybody to you guys, uh, um, give everyone's names. Uh, and uh, as you as as you gather around this hole, um, she she warns you for a moment and says, "Oh, um, if you're a little squeamish, you may not want to." Well, uh, are you bothered by bones? No. All right. It's well, may, maybe keep fun. the child away, though. Pip uh, looks over, and his hair sort of like. Uh, jostles in the breeze and there are like bones in his yeah. hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't they have bones in his hair? <laughs> and like, yeah. I mean, she said this at first, but like he was off picking uh, plants. <laughs> I think he will be just fine. I do appreciate the concern and the warning, but uh, Peep is not like other children. Um. Okay, she just like it gives a bit of a perplexed nod, um, but she'll just go continue the introductions. And for those of you who get like close enough to the hole, um, you'll be able to see that there is indeed bones that uh, appear to be uh, of a couple of humanoids, and the remains are really, really old. And the the people that are in the hole are very carefully just dusting them off and. Uh, um, you see them use uh, these bunch of tools uh, uh, specifically to like get them out really delicately. Uh, some of them are, t are sketching, uh, in, and some of them are taking notes. Um, and from I think you'd be able to see this just fine. Uh, that these are, uh, as you'd imagine, they are uh, the remains of uh, uh, a couple of Lidarians. Uh, you can see that the the Vox. Um, that they used to have are black 
and they are connected to the bones, like they're part of uh, the, the skeleton, uh, but they are... Uh, they are differently colored, they appear to be of a different material, despite being like part of the actual skeleton. Hmm. Um... Uh, Tekka, you are quickly approached by the person that, uh, um... That, uh, that, uh, uh Kirla had pointed out to you, and it is, uh, uh, slightly older compared to her, uh, elf. Uh, um, is just w looking at you wide-eyed, but where you you are often met with hostility, um, you just find uh, really intense curiosity and fascination um, as he immediately invades your personal space uh, and begins poking at your horns and asking you, Question after question after question, barely giving you any time to answer. And a lot of them are about your uh, your family, um, asking who your father is, who your mother is. Uh, Tekka will just, like, reach out with one hand towards his face. Hold your distance. Uh... <laughs> uh he holds up one hand, um, the, and he's sort of like he keeps his position, but he does straighten his back a little bit, uh, and he just goes, "Okay, okay, okay, okay." But can I look? <laughs> look, no touch, kind of thing. Hold your distance. Okay, Calm all right. Them. Right, right over here, and he steps like. Two feet back. <laughs> what are you searching for here? Uh, well, all of us, uh, we found, well, that. And, uh, um, you know, it's really interesting. So these are definitely the remains of Itarova. But, um, here, here, come closer. Uh, but you can keep your distance. You can just come a little closer. He gestures. What am I looking for? Alright, look, look, look. Look at the box on the outer sides of their arms. So, um, the Itarava, uh, they, that, those are box unique to them. But, uh, these, this couple right here, uh, definitely, uh, married a couple, they had children. Um, this we think, but we're pretty sure about that. Um, <laughs> Their box, they're far smaller. The ones on each side of, of the arms. In fact, some they're barely there. Look at it, look at it, look at the male. Look at that one. Uh, you see that arm? And um <laughs> hold up. <clears throat> Sorry, that's that's me coughing. <laughs> um and he like just points frantically. Um and uh, um and he says, well, 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 we think that uh, uh, the the size of those box, the further back you go, the smaller they were, until you get to a point where they didn't have them in that location at all, uh, which would make them a little bit closer to the rest of the Atara. That's exciting, right? It seems to be kind of a more um, recent uh, sort of uh, uh, evolutionary trait. Who are you to tell their story? But, but Who are you to ruin their peace? Um. He hesitates for just a moment. And then he immediately resumes talking and says, well, I'm an anthropologist. That's my job. This is what we do. This is what all of us we do. That's what I've dedicated the last 459 years of my life. Um, well, I mean, you know, we didn't used to be on the dar. At first it was like on Plurna. Have you ever been on Plurna? No. Well, there's a lot of fascinating history there, too. Um, and I do wonder what... No, no. 
don't say it. Uh, but isn't it amazing? I mean, think about it, how our bodies change over time and how different people used to look way back when. And uh, who am I? I am an anthropologist. And, and did <laughs> the land permit anthropologists to do this? Yes. <laughs> so you spoke with the land. I... What? Well, I, 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 guess, I guess you could see our job as, as I mean, it's in a sort of like philosophical manner. We are speaking with the land. How will this knowledge help Ladaria and not yourself? He holds up a finger, opens his mouth. He seemed to have like an answer ready. Um, and then he, he looks like he doesn't. Uh, and he looks at Kirla like almost looking for help, but she um, is just a distance away uh, going through Talix's notes. Um, and he looks back at Tekka. Um, Slay lowers his finger and he says, Well, for the same reason that it will help us. Uh, knowing history and knowing the history of uh, humanity as a whole, it is extremely important. For reasons. I mean, uh, you know, we just give people knowledge and they do whatever they have to do with it. Uh, my, my job is just to uncover it. Well, if your job is to uncover, then I will cover again. And Tekka will like start taking out his shovel attachment and <laughs> oh. attach it. To oh no, here comes the handsaw. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, if he does nothing else, Tekka will start walking into the hole and start covering the skeletons with the church. I think uh, if the guy is like just kind of standing there stunned, I think Pontifex is gonna like put, walk over to him, put a friendly hand on his shoulder, and be like, "I feel like you barked up the wrong tree, my friend. I am sorry for this." <laughs> <laughs> As a fellow historian, I understand the significance of the uh, excavations you are doing, but uh, there is no stopping him at this point. <laughs> <laughs> He's just smiling happily. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure Brooke would just like to grin as well while we watch us take a covering the hole. <laughs> <sighs> what, what happens? Okay, uh, so it is, uh, I mean, like I said, there's a few people in the hole. Um, so <laughs> I guess... <laughs> you're, you're, you're tossing... He puts it back. <laughs> That's so passive aggressive. That's so actively aggressive. You're shoveling dirt onto them. Uh, no, I don't think that can be He's like that. actively cutting sutures as doctors put them in. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Alright, so, if people are in the hole, as, like, dirt begins to be shoveled onto the rourke that they were in the middle of and everything, uh, <laughs> they all just go, they, you know, just gasping loudly, uh, standing back, pulling away from, uh, uh, from you. Um, attention begins to, like, uh, turn towards Tekka, people start to whisper, um, mainly in Sylvan. Uh, Killa eventually also, like, lifts her gaze from, um, from the notes and sort of like just drops them and comes over. Oh. Um, Italic, you just reach over and save them before they hit the ground. Um, and as as Kirla comes over, she just like 
most of them are just in stunned silence. Uh, like, they just don't really know what to do. Uh, one of them, for those of you who speak Sylvan would understand this, one of them turns towards Kirla and said, uh, uh, says, I, I thought you said you they weren't with uh, the Jade people. And she's just like... <laughs> uh, and she answers, well, uh, I thought so. And then towards the rest of your group in common, she will say, Why are you doing this? Uh, yeah, if Talix sees what's happening, he's immediately going to, uh, just pick up his book real quick and run over to Tekka. Oh, uh, sorry, 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 Tekka, please, 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 uh, okay, we're gonna be going now. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll see, I'll see, maybe see you in Simply Lawn. thank you. Tekka, Tekka, please, come on. Talix, I Wait, am not on. done. No, no, please, <laughs> don't, don't do this, please, Tekka. <laughs> then are we going? Yes, yes, we're leaving. All right. I'll say it in English as well. Sorry, so sorry, so sorry. <laughs> Just the cultural misunderstanding. We'll, we'll have a fascinating conversation about it later. <laughs> um. <sighs> Yeah, all right. Well, uh, Tekka, Talix is just hurriedly pulling you away. Yeah, if Talix is actively pulling Tekka, Tekka will, like, with a little resistance, walk back out of the hole with him. Uh, Tekka, we'll have a conversation about this later. I'm, I'm sorry. You see what they are doing. Yes, it's... It's to learn, so we can learn about our, their cultures. Why not speak with those there? Well, these people can't speak anymore, Teko. They are so willing to learn. Why not learn language? Well, hmm. <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you moving away from uh, the group? Yeah, I gather so. It sounds okay. like we're leaving. Tell us okay. also. Hip yeah. holds up the handful of uh, various weeds and plants that he had gathered and says, Should I put these back then, Tekka? No, those are fine. You can keep those, Peppa. Uh, how far away are we at this point? Uh, well, if you're just like, if you have just resumed walking, I guess you've put, you're started to put like a good 100 feet of distance between you and them, and you just Hang keep on. going. Uh, uh? Talix is going to, Talix is going to run over to, uh, <coughs> I forgot her name. Kirla? Yeah, she has her hands Here, on her Kira. hips, just looking out on the hole, like, you know, yeah, no, no, what, what do we do, kind of, kind of pose. Uh, he's gonna, like, kind of, just give Tekka the hold motion, you know, and run over to Kirla. Out of curiosity, do any of you speak the Atarian Art languages? Look, you should just go. <laughs> just a question. Um. All right. She she sighs, and it seems like her patience is very thin. Her um her attitude towards you is very different at this point. Um. 
but she points a finger uh, towards the, the black-haired elf who was talking to Tekka earlier and uh, says, I think, yeah, um, N Nerindam knows uh, Etarian and Ezenfer, I think. Yeah, the language of the D, as in. Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm sorry that... about this. Yeah, well, just leave us to our work. Okay. Uh, does Alex uh, uh, speak Sylvan specifically? No, Elvish only. Okay, alright. So, um,. Yeah, there would be some whispers between them that you wouldn't be able to comprehend. <laughs> <laughs> well, they didn't have guns. <laughs> <coughs> I see her with these. Uh, now what? Um, I guess we're gonna. Nope. I guess we're gonna. <laughs> this was a run surprising to the, uh, brief. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna run to the uh, to the port, or you know, start marching in that direction. Although, okay. Well, I'll use the conversation uh, over. Will, yeah, Talix will talk to Tekka along the way. I think, uh, so real quick, I think before we leave, uh, as everyone is kind of walking, walking off or whatever, I think maybe Pontifex lags behind a little bit and uh, walks over to, uh, to, I keep forgetting your name, Kilia? Kirla? Kirla. Kirla. I, I keep thinking of a Pokemon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think he goes over there and says, uh, sorry about the debacle, uh, this is in Sylvan, about the little debacle that uh, just occurred, but, uh, I had a question for you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, just, no. You know, a real quick one. Uh, it's not too much trouble. Hey, this whole thing has been a lot of trouble. Yes, I am aware. I apologize for my uh, acquaintance. And you made no <laughs> effort to stop him. He like looks down at his old ass self and looks back up. Do I look capable of stopping him? You look capable of talking. <laughs> Does he seem uh, receptive to words? Please leave. Uh, okay. uh, good luck. And he'll, he'll leave then. <clears throat> That's an attitude for someone who's doing illegal stuff. <laughs> I was just trying to help. Oh, I didn't mean you. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. <laughs> Pontifex, what are you up to? <laughs> I was just trying to help, but okay, why? <laughs> Five people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't uh, speak Elvish. Uh, point of fact, see, with you understanding Sylvan, you would be able to like pick up on a few whispers about, uh, um, well, uh, some of them would basically be telling each other uh, something along the lines of, told you tieflings are all trouble. And uh, hmm. yeah, pretty much just comments on Tekka's appearance. Maybe, maybe Pontifex will give a, a, a snide ending remark as he is known to do, but like... Eh, he had good intentions. I wish I could say the same for you. And then leaves. Racist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. You guys are making enemies everywhere you go. Holy shit. <laughs> I didn't start this. <laughs> I didn't start this one. Pip just picks up a rock and throws it in one of their holes. <laughs> <laughs> These are enemies now, damn racists. Oh no. 
<laughs> Please use catapult. Okay, so it's door. fine. We we just can't go to any colonies associated with either Pluma <laughs> or the Moonwatch. <laughs> not the gnomes, not the elves. Not all of my people not... are racists. <laughs> <laughs> just most of them. <laughs> Guess we're heading inland for early. <laughs> we can't associate with the Atari Philly either, probably. Fuck all of these. Let's go to the castle. <laughs> the castle is filled with gnomes. No! <laughs> it's a castle. Oh, man. Well, all right, moving on. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. Whenever Talix catches back up, he would like to just follow up with Tekka real quick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I asked, and for what it's worth, they did have someone there who speaks Lidarian languages, like myself. Good. That is so, something. Maybe it would be good if, uh, if such expeditions had... Ladarian people involved as well. Take Tell me, lot. is it is it blasphemous to you to uh, to dig up remains like that? Is it not so in Palerna? Well, it's if he. There's certain things we allow to be done. If we know it's for a greater good. Well, not everyone sees it that way, but... I think I do. There's a lot to be learned from the past, and... Sometimes, uh... Sometimes the best way to see the past is to dig it up. I will not speak for everyone of Ladaria, but I cannot sit by and watch. They should okay. remain one with the land. Thank you for sharing your beliefs with me. I, uh, I was ignorant to spiritual significance of it. You could not have known. Well, I think all of us are. That's something we should know. Well, perhaps in the future, for the sake of our group, do not prompt me to speak. Understood. <laughs> what? I apologize. Okay, that's it. Hmm. Kai. All right. Um, anything else you guys want to talk about before we continue? <clears throat> uh, does Pontifex want to share his thing? <laughs> uh, the dream? Yeah. Wait, is that something Seems like we'll a really come awkward time okay. to do so? I mean, there's like <laughs> you have many hours of walking ahead of you, right? Um, but if not, I'll uh, just uh, skip ahead. Um, so hold on. So the 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 seed that Matt knows Talix gave to Brooke have have do we know this in character? We, no, we have not uh, talked about it as a group yet. But you'd okay. see, uh, he used to. Oh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, that's what he used to wear around his neck, right? Yeah. So I guess you'd be able to see that it's no longer there. And I'd assume that Brooke would wear it now. Just okay. not above well. his shirt, but... Like... <clears throat> sometimes you could see the... I don't know what it's called. The real part of the necklace. Yeah. Okay. Then yeah, sure. I can... I guess he'll bring that up, but I guess when he notices Talik's not wearing it... What is uh, is the deal with the seed? 
Oh yeah. Uh... Yeah. Oh yeah. Indeed, it is kind of a big deal. <laughs> no, no, no. It's safe. Uh, Brooks holding it right now. Why? Can everyone hear? Or only you two? I mean, well, I, yeah, it's up to. I don't him. think he's uh, being quiet about it. Oh, all right. Uh, yeah, everyone. Um, last night I I talked with Brooke a little bit, and I want everyone to know that uh, I'm not just acting for myself in secret, and I want you to know that. I see this as a group effort. Whatever we're doing for the future of Ludaria, it's not something I'm gonna do by myself. I just want you to know that I'm trusting all of you with it. So to that end, uh, Brooke is carrying the seed for now. I, I think he's the strongest one among us. He can keep it safe. But... I think any decision we make with it, ultimately, I want to make as a group. I see. Uh, also... I don't want us to be on the run from the Jade Council. So, uh, I'm gonna be... I'll be yeah. sending a letter to Bari and Thar. It's funny that you mentioned that, actually. Uh, your friend, he, uh, the other cleric, he uh, received a dream, a message from the fox and such. Uh, and I recall I mentioned uh, I received a similar one uh, regarding you uh, in the past. Uh, no. It seems I have been revisited uh, lately. It is. Perhaps at this same night that this little exchange happened, which I don't want to read too much into that, but it may have some significance. Uh, it seems that my dream has shifted. Uh, the will of the goat has changed from protecting you to protect the seed. So uh, it seems that the gods are on your side and... Uh, or no, it was the tree that said protect the seed. Yes. Yeah, okay. He, he will double back on that reef a message from the goat uh, from Vakanath itself saying to protect the seed uh, it seems to be more concerned about that but the goat uh, not herself uh, of course uh, but uh, the goat had something more uh, profound it is maybe something more pertinent to what we were talking about uh, I it thought said, that uh, you will be surprised you know of the goat I follow them for a reason they said to, uh, in the end, for us to make our own decisions, uh, to not bend to the will of the gods or to the council, but to do what we feel is right. Uh, they... Valknoth herself sent a message for me. Uh, don't know, I wasn't explicitly told to tell you, but uh, it seemed... Oh, of course, of course, it'd be for me. I mean, <laughs> right? Uh, probably. Uh, you're much more in tune with your faith than I am. Uh, <laughs> the wording specifically being what message comes from Vakanath and is meant for Talix. <laughs> oh, oh, was it? <laughs> yes. I am forgetful, old man. Why would you not just go to Talix in his dreams, you weird <laughs> tree? Just say, why you got to be so cryptic? You can be more direct, like me. <laughs> and the goat. <laughs> Well, I don't have dreams. <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, I suppose the elves were never quite meant to be a devout. It is. It is a fair point. I know all of this. Just Matt is stupid. Acknowledge <laughs> to me. Uh, uh, now that you mention it, and uh, I got recent word from God. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I seem to recall it mentioning to tell you, uh, so it seems like I am perhaps not as favored by the gods as I previously <laughs> thought, and I am in fact just a messenger boy because I can sleep. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> this has been a shocking revelation. 
Um, just to go over like a few details. Um, how fells? No, no, no. But that's that's fine. It's like general uh, knowledge. We might have gone over this in like back in session one or two. Um, so like it's 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 good to like go over them again. A uh, how fells? So elves are trans. They do not sleep and they do not dream, and thus uh, there are no clerics um, among elves ever. Um, like clerics in the sense of like that they can cast, uh, uh, you know, magic. Like literally in the sense of the class. Um, they have wizards, they have sorcerers, they, but they do not have clerics. Um, half elves can sleep and can dream. Talix just seems to not be able to dream, but it's not a thing that's due to its race, or at least no other half elves have, have half elf. Has that right, right, because I feel like I've seen Talix um, sleep. Yes, he does yeah, he sleep. Sleeps, he sleeps. doesn't trance, yeah. um, but he also <clears throat> doesn't seem to dream. Um, Brooke knew of someone else who uh, didn't have dreams, uh, but that's like it. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to cover that. Okay. Uh, and it's Talix's father was the full elf, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's... that's Aaron. Right. Okay. Anyways, a, a long story short, uh, protect the seed, not Talix, uh, and uh, <laughs> do what oh. we want. Uh, don't bend the knee to uh, the gods or the council or uh, some such. Uh, okay, is... protect the seed, not me. <laughs> it that's, is what is uh, said verbatim. That fits okay. along with my plans. Right. Okay. Do you know what would happen if we would ignore that warning and protect Talix instead of the seed? Well, if he has the seed, then it is, you know, kind of redundant. But now that, well, come to find he does not have the seed, it answers the question. I was wondering why the shift of verbiage, but uh, I suppose now that you have the seed, they don't give a shit about you, but you have the seed, so... Let's see. <clears throat> yes. Well... <sighs> The core okay. thing to take away from here is that uh, the gods do not want us to follow their will. Uh, specifically, even though they just gave an order to do something very specific. But the rest of it is uh, to do what we believe is right and do what we want to do. And to not bend to uh, the, the gods and the council by extension, I would assume, uh, was not made to tell us what to do. Kind but, of uh, To give guidance, I suppose. Advice. <clears throat> well, since we're at that point, is everyone okay if I hold on to the seed, or does anyone else feel more suitable for that job? No, I agree with Alex. If it is his decision, it is his to make. No reason to doubt you. That's that's the point. It's not just me. I don't trust myself to just make the decision for all of Ludaria. Or, or for all the people that would be affected by it. I do think it is uh, perhaps reasonable to uh, entrust the seed as long as the person holding it understands the significance, understands the weight of the thing they are holding. Which I can assume that Brooke has some minor understanding of, but uh, take a and peep, maybe not so much. Our ways are not known to them in the slightest, short of you and I. Yeah, that's fair. Well, Brook should know better than anyone, I think, given <laughs> his experience in the past. I mean, I wouldn't say better than anyone. I don't really have anything to do with, well, not directly with Vakanas, right? And no, I, I agree with the decision for Brooke, but uh, if your intention is to pass this thing around like a, a what do you say, a hot sausage, uh, <laughs> this, maybe there is education to be had. I feel like there is a bit of animosity uh, between Pip and Tekka and our, well, your, but I suppose our faith. I agree with that. He's uh, well, not asking them to believe, it's... to convert, but merely to understand. Information is never bad. 
It is just as important that we understand them. Agreed. That is why we are here. Okay. Yeah, the question was also for you too, by the way, since clearly you are part of the group. Right. And I look at Pip and Tekka. When you speak, I will listen and learn. If that is needed. I could ask for nothing more. I do not ask for belief or faith. I simply ask for a willingness to learn and understanding. And what about you, Pip? Um, well, I had to learn about Vakanath in school. So, I know a little bit already. It's fine with me. Okay, so... Yes, we'll get to Assembly Lawn. And I want to send a message as quickly as possible. Do you have an idea on what you want to write in that letter? Somewhat. Uh, just that I wish you arrange a meeting. And Simli Lon. <laughs> Rather than Inaria. I think uh, it would be a lot safer that way. Kind of agree that a meeting under our conditions would be safer. But just keep in mind that that will... Well, assuming from what we heard, uh, <clears throat> most likely put them on the trail of incriminating you even more if you don't come to them directly. So just be prepared for that. Well, Ultimately, at least from what I understand, the gods are on your side of this. So even should we go against the council or be hunted by them, uh, hopefully. With the gods being on our side, perhaps uh, the council will be less threatening, you could say. Plus, of course, there is discord among the three, and the other deities are fighting with each other, but that is unlikely, right? I've never heard of such a thing. And as neither have I, so... The gods are on our side, the, in the, in the enemy, uh, metaphorically, being the council in this situation. Uh, uses faith as a weapon, perhaps it will uh, not find them in the hour of need. One can hope. <laughs> okay. Well, first thing is send in that letter. And, uh, we'll see. We'll see how they take to it. But, ultimately, if I get blamed for something, even if I didn't do it, maybe I just have to accept that. I just... I just don't want to go through... Well, anyway. The important thing is the seed is safe, no matter what happens to me. So, we'll just do the best we can. I mean, the same goes as before. Don't wander off by yourself. Hmm. Yeah. No matter with or without the seed. Just keep right. an eye out for each other. How's Jamiel doing? <laughs> oh, um... It is currently in uh, Tekka's possession, if you'd uh, uh, like yeah. to check it out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Tekka will hold out the journal and hand it to Tux. Uh, any chance you knew any of those elves or the, uh... Or the site we were digging in? They were digging in? Oh, oops. 
That's not Jamiel's color. It's an imposter. I, no, I, I changed it based on the background that I'm writing on. Uh huh. Mm. Yes, yes, you found me out. The book has been secretly swapped out for a I different one. <laughs> Dark Jamiel. <laughs> Dark Jamiel. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. If you start making Smiley, so I swear to God damn it. <laughs> you did this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I just wanted to use that one. <coughs> oh. Just. Open maybe it would jog your memory somewhere somewhere along the lines. Uh, maybe uh, maybe Simulon will be good for you. Surely you passed through there at some point. Oh. oh. What feel what? Evil Jemuel is messing with your mind. Uh oh. He has danger I, sense. It's gonna be an earthquake. It's a barbarian. <laughs> I'm in danger. Uh. Talus is going to look around frantically. Whereabouts are we? We're, hey, we're still like kind of on going over fun hills fun right now, right? <clears throat> I guess we're traveling. Are we traveling along a river? Um. So the uh, can I mark it? You roughly met with uh, the um, the archaeologists and the anthropologists roughly over here. So you, we were, uh, from then on, you were just heading like southwest to get to the river. You're in between these two rivers. You're not near the water. Okay. Um, uh, but since you're like, you're in a slightly more elevated area, so you, you are starting to see the sea uh, up ahead. Uh, but you're still like, just, you know, a whiz away. Um, <laughs> Mega blossoms. Oh, yeah. I, I think I know what it's... What it's going to be, but... Um, well... If he looks around... It's... The... The sun is still up. Um, it's, it's setting, but it's still plenty of daylight. Uh, and you're looking around the bright green hills covered in flowers. Um, the tall grass uh, that, that Pip was in the middle of, uh, of digging through. Uh, you see a little... Um, it's a few birds uh, taking flight from uh, uh, nearby trees, uh, and uh, um, as uh, the um, as more ink uh, comes together on the page uh, um, and forms a few more words, uh, the ground begins to shake beneath your feet. Um, and it's it's slight at first. It's more you hear it uh, before uh, you feel it beneath your feet, and then um, it be the tremors increase in intensity more and more and more and more oh. uh, until Everyone you're. Get to the ground. Get... There's nothing at all around us, is there? Uh, no, not near you. Okay. Um, and. <sighs> If you didn't get on the ground on your own, uh, you would have been knocked down at some point. Uh, that's how intense uh, uh, this earthquake is. And it lasts uh, for a few minutes until it begins uh, uh, to fade. And uh, uh, the ground goes back to being still. 
Mm. <sighs> oh, is that your first one, Professor? Was it? I thought we had. I thought we experienced this before. How did we? <coughs> I yeah, think we did. One. All right. Yeah. Has Pip experienced these like all his life? Yeah, he has. <coughs> hey, Jamie, you saw that coming. <laughs> Can I even sense? I assume that we are all fine, but uh, hopefully, hopefully all the colonies are fine nearby. I, we're not going to just gloss over this. How did you feel that coming? Did you feel vibrations? Could you sense them better than us, or did you have like a prediction? Does the tremors have a smell? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you felt it? What did it feel like? Was it a a temperature difference? Was it a, 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 a vibration feeling? Was it a... And Pontifex is, is taking notes. <laughs> um... The ink um, that collects itself on the page swirls around for a moment, not leaving behind uh, uh, a trail, uh, just moving uh, freely on the page. Um, it appears that uh, um, you can visually see when uh, Jamil is uh, thinking and uh, uh, trying to come up with uh, with the right words. Um, until finally. So it was vibrations. I, I could see that being the case. Your senses are strangely acute for a book. Yeah, what else does he feel? Does he feel when we open and close him? <laughs> I assume he knows we are here. And you can see outside of the book, yes. If I recall, I, I have kept you a in a in a satchel before and you were still able to see outside of it uh, yes perhaps you don't eyes that we can cover <laughs> <laughs> that was a typo Jamil. <laughs> 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 oh, now you are doing the emojis, okay. <laughs> it's very unprofessional. <laughs> I actually so, didn't know you could move text boxes like that. Sorry. Wow. Whoa! <laughs> Jenny, you crazy! <laughs> no, eh. <laughs> I haven't considered this before, but uh, perhaps once we get to Simlea Lilan, uh, Simlea Lily Lan. <laughs> Simlea Lilan. Uh, hopefully, the letter that I sent back in uh, uh, the first town we were in, uh, that one, when we got the world point cards, hopefully, the letter I sent to my mentor, I uh, got to him. And I get a response. Perhaps if we are in Sam Leilan for a Sam Leilani law for long enough time, I cannot say it in Pontifex's voice. Uh, if we're there for long enough, uh, maybe I can work with him, and we can find a way to communicate with you without. Uh... I know Sam Leilan. I live there. But, uh, <laughs> I, I have uh, problems when I am thinking too hard. Uh, perhaps I can work with my mentor to find some way for you to uh, communicate with us or uh, perhaps notify us uh, that you have words without us having to 
check in with you. If you can predict these disasters like this, <laughs> making a way for you to warn us would be useful. And uh, Jamie, all that is inappropriate. That's not me! <laughs> you don't even have hands. <laughs> I just get flipped off by a book. Right. If books could talk, you would not be the first. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I don't, don't know. Would you be willing to? Okay, yes, that's an interesting question. Uh, this likely have to go through a few phases. A few phases. I'm having a stroke. It seems a few phases of a testing and uh, maybe experimentation to figure out something. But uh, if anyone can figure it out. Perhaps him. Now, being able to speak uh, more easily with Jamil would be right. Uh, wonderful. Perhaps <laughs> some way for him to to speak, or or even just some way for him to notify us of something uh, impending danger or something, or like a, a, a hey, I have a message for you. Open me, something of this sort. That would certainly be a lot more convenient. Well, yeah. I hadn't considered it before, admittedly, because it hasn't been that relevant, but uh, if you can sense danger that none of us can, you could, could save a lot of trouble, perhaps even our lives. And if you have ways of seeing outside of a, of a place you are hidden, I wonder what else you can do. Or perhaps more useful than you, or than we previously thought. Hmm. That is, uh, suppose that is the right attitude. Uh, sorry, I'm taking up uh, too much of our time, but uh, I, I will uh, start writing down some ideas. Okay. Huh. Well, thank, thank you. You, you perhaps saved our ankles. Hmm. <clears throat> All right. Well, then I guess we continue on. Um, as you finally come uh, within view of the Latadu River, um, you follow it for the final stretch of the journey, and uh, in the end you find uh, a small port. It's nothing but a handful of buildings and uh, a single wooden pier jutting out towards the sea. Three small boats are tied near the river, and a handful of empty carts sit around, unused. Away from the, water, from the water's edge, one of these smaller buildings is surrounded by a bright and colorful garden, which extends far beyond it. <clears throat> um, at this point, the sun has set. Um, it's... It's a, uh, um, it, it, it's very dark. You have some natural light from the moons, but um, uh, yeah, that's it. And you can see that there is light coming from the small building as well. I think, if at all possible, if we could speak to someone tonight. Potentially save some time. I don't expect we'll be leaving tonight, but... <clears throat> Who are you looking for again? Durok. Durok. Uh, I don't know the person, but that was the name I was given. I mean, it shouldn't be that hard to find them, right? They look at the handful of houses. Just Let's... knock on every door. 
Okay, well, let's start closest to the pier, I guess. Okay. Uh, as you approach the pier, you can see that uh, most of these buildings actually are not uh, um, houses in the proper sense of the word. Uh, they don't have windows, but and they have the, these really wide opening, uh, like these really wide double doors. Um, it seems that most of these are actually warehouses, um, and they're not meant for for people to live in them. <clears throat> um, one of them has, and you can hear them, um, one of them is uh, like more like a stable, so there's horses inside. Um, and then the only one that appears to actually be a proper house is the one with the light, uh, um, that is some kind of candlelight inside. Um, so that's the last one you're left with. Alright, uh, after giving a quick, like, uh, look of confirmation with everyone, Talus will move up. If no one wants to do anything else. Talus mm -hmm. will go up to the door. Go ahead. Alright, knock. Okay, as soon as you knock on the door, you hear frantic barking from inside. Um, a gruff voice yells out, Coming! Then you hear heavy footsteps, and uh, the voice, as it comes close, uh, closer, says, Down, girl, down. Um, when the door opens, an imposing orc stands before you. His, his gray skin is cracked and folded uh, and betrays his age, but his frame is still massive enough to uh, intimidate you a little. Uh, behind him, you hear a deep uh, uh, growling. Oh, uh, you must be Dorak. Uh, <clears throat> he looks down at Talix and then past him, the rest of the group. Uh, seems to be like just br briefly like counting how many of you there are. You see his eyes like um, going from person to person. Um, and uh, uh, after a moment, he says, you're looking for a boat. Uh, yes, we were sent by... Crap. Kirla. <laughs> Kir Kirla Leo, Leo Satra. Yes, we were sent by Kirla Leo Satra. Uh, <laughs> she she said to mention her name. Uh, we are looking to get passage to Simlilon. As soon as it would be convenient. <clears throat> we're... Uh, something like new colleagues of hers. Um, he opens it a little wider and he steps out, and you're forced to like take a step back back to um leave him enough space. And he closes the door, and you're Can going I see to the dog. Uh, just for a moment, you see like a paw reaching forward, and, and it's a bright uh, uh white. The fur is completely white. Just a paw reaching over, then he closes oh, no. just the door, and you can hear like the scratching <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the scratching and uh, um, whining uh, behind it. Um, as uh, Zurok, uh, <laughs> Zurok crosses uh, his arms uh, and says. Next ship will be here in two days. Okay. Uh, sorry if I woke you from your sleep. Uh, we just... We're in a bit of a rush. <laughs> uh, okay, we've no need to disturb you any longer. Uh, that I don't suppose there's a good place. over there. He points at uh, one of the smaller ones. He's <laughs> empty. If you need to stay the night, you can use it. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. The price. Uh, we're good on our own food and everything. He nods. The price for passage on the ship will be a small favor. Oh. Oh. What? Um. <clears throat> he. Hmm. He gestures at the door that he just closed behind him, and he says, uh, <clears throat> The earth was shaking earlier today. 
Lots of things fall off the shelves. I need help cleaning up. Certainly. It is easy. Oh. Um. Then come in. Ah, he opens okay. the door again, and uh, um, as soon as as soon as he does, he like puts a door in the um, in the door frame. Uh, he puts a foot in a door frame, um, and again he says down, down. Um, and when he when he finally opens the door wide, you can see that uh, um, this dog um, not only is large and completely white but uh, uh, she's completely surrounded around uh, her uh, her body uh, with this really thick fluffy wool um, which makes oh. her look like three times her size um, and as you um, as Talix begin to follow begins to follow Durok inside uh, she leaps onto him um, <clears throat> Lens on his chest and begins to lick his face. Oh. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Who, whose face? Talix. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, Talix will just frantically start petting. Durok has leaped on top of you and is licking your face. <laughs> How do you react? <laughs> 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 Well, look at you! Aren't you a snuggly little fluffy snuggle bug? She oh. she hops off of uh, Talix, and uh, um, next uh, the next victim will be Pip, uh, who slammed down to the ground. <laughs> 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 She's pretty much your size. It's a good death. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, as as Durok lets all of you in. Uh, um, and he eventually closes the door, the door behind the group. He says, I hope you are not allergic. Well, uh, not that I know of. Although I must say, it's a rather rare sight to see a Flarnan person out in one of these. Um, he just gives her like a bit of a shrug and says, Founder. Huh. Her name is Cabbage. <laughs> I would die I... for Cabbage. <laughs> How did you say that with such a straight face? <laughs> this, this is slightly... Uh... Talix is maybe a little suspicious of the found her statement. That just seems like... Obviously he's leaving something out and that makes Talix a little suspicious. You want to roll an inside check? Maybe. Do it? Yep. Oh yeah, I forgot that I've got disadvantage on this, so I don't need to roll twice. Yeah. Oof. Oof. Yes. Number nine. <laughs> um... As uh, he starts leading you from room to room, he points out that the damage in a... Uh, in, uh, in the living room, all the kitchen cabinets where things have fallen out of. One entire shelf has fallen over. And it looks it looks like he already has fixed a good portion of it, but it's just... Um, it's it's This this building is uh, a mess. There's even a part of the rooftop that has collapsed. Um, and as he takes you from, from place to place, uh, um, putting each of you to some use, uh, uh, even Pip being tasked with the simpler stuff, just picking up the lighter items that have fallen over. Um, he, it's clear that this is the kind of person who just isn't very talkative in general. Um, and uh, from that, uh, um, he doesn't have a lot of... Uh, he's not very expressive, uh, and it makes him like hard to read, but not in a sense like he's trying to, that's just that's just how he is. Hmm. Um, any attempt at small talk from here on out kind of just fails. Uh, what but about he... small talk with the dog? Oh, the dog is happy to talk to you. <laughs> Cabbage um, like it here? She happy? Yeah, she'll she'll Seems tell you. She, yeah, she'll tell you all about how she's been living here for a while, and that Durok is very nice, and that together they grow a lot of things in the garden. And whenever he needs a hole, she will dig a hole. 
Uh, and uh-huh. there's always a lot of people visiting and coming and going. There's all these uh, these wooden things on the water that come and go all the time. Uh, but she's never been on one. But the people go on it all the time. You are the goodest girl. <laughs> <laughs> I and like she how she knows like, it. Pipkin, Pipkin speak to her as like an equal and actually speak her language, but he still just speaks baby talk to her. <laughs> I'm I'm actually curious how Jamuel is reacting to this <laughs> given that he had one. Yeah. I wonder if that like um, sparks any memories for him. Yeah, memories. Um okay, but <laughs> <laughs> why, why are you saying it like that? <laughs> <laughs> by by the time you're um, <laughs> mostly uh, done with helping Durak, it's just really late into the night and he likes to go to sleep, but he asks that you come back tomorrow. Um, Certainly, I'll do much better tomorrow. And, um, I've been and walking a long ways. He, just, he and Cabbage will accompany you to... Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh, uh, Durok and Cabbage accompany you to to the to the little warehouse in question. It's just this, uh, um, it's a smallish building, but the fact that it's completely empty actually means that you have a lot of space. Um, and it's not uh, there isn't a way of heating it, uh, so it is it is pretty cold. Um, but uh, you guys just set up uh, <coughs> uh, your your blankets, your bed rolls in there, um, and yeah, when you you have you finally have a chance to um, take out Jamuel and what would you like to ask him? That was Pip's thing. I don't know. Oh. Or that was Austin. I don't know. If, are <laughs> we actually doing it? What? Were you joking? You, are you are you no, actually going to ask? I Jamuel don't think now? Pip was going to ask, but oh. like I thought maybe Jamuel might might like say something if he remembered something because of the dog but well Pip wasn't right, going fine, to ask us. anything oh well <laughs> oh, Pip needs to like make tired. ask uh, Tekka to take out the book and open it uh, it, like somebody needs to do that or interactions uh, with Jamuel cannot be started Tekka gave it to Talix so oh I assumed I gave it back oh okay well I... it, it's here on the Talix. table um <laughs> Didn't Jamuel have it? And, you know, Pip okay. jangles the little dog tags hmm. on his hair. Okay, sure. Uh, Jamuel, do you remember anything about... Well, you remember your own companion, right? Uh, a sheep dog like that? We were wondering what her, what his or her name was. So Starts found with a, a C or an O or something. Oh! Really? You don't... Well, that didn't bring anything back for you? You don't remember seeing anything like that? We buried you with a... Was that... Oh. oh, that's a shame. Thought maybe that would be a, a closer memory. Something that might be more likely to spark something. If it was an emotional thing. But I don't really know how any of this works. Professor, what do you think? Hmm. Not sure. Any shortcuts on restoring memories? If there were, this would be a 
a simple a task. Huh. A lot of things would be made easier. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. Well, it's been a long day. I want to turn. Yeah, yeah, there is always the possibility that uh, the memories themselves are not lost, but are merely uh, repressed. And if that is the case, I can perhaps uh, do something with that. But uh, if they're not there, I, I'm afraid they cannot help. Well, maybe this is something else we can research in Simlilon. They've got a... Well, if any place on... on the, at least the peninsula would have any information about arcane magical doings, it would probably be there. Very likely. Okay, good night. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um <laughs> Are you keeping watch tonight? Uh, yeah. How are we? Are we not? <laughs> We're in a warehouse, if that makes a difference. Don't think it should. Oh, oh. <laughs> I guess someone better wake Talix up then. Cause... If we're taking watch, the professor can take the first one. He's probably going to be awake, um, still like Whoa. writing down thoughts Whoa. and stuff. To... He's taking the first watch? He probably. has never done that before. No, he's, he usually is the last watch because he wakes up early, but he's probably going to stay up a little later because the thoughts of... Um, of He's basically trying to formulate things to send to his mentor to try to get Jamiel to be able to talk to us. So he's like writing down a bunch of ideas. Okay. Uh, I'm still using your um, the perception checks that we had uh, uh, ruled for this particular journey. Um, I'll it looks like the rock. Have the colors the... changed now? Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Have the colors changed. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Uh, yeah, yeah, they have changed. What did you have to check? <laughs> what were you checking? <laughs> you don't know that? I'm guessing it's just once per day, but I, I don't know. Uh, Pontifex, at, at, at some point during your first watch, you just feel something hard and heavy hit you in the chest, and you hear a... <laughs> From Pip? Yes. <laughs> oh god. Okay, yeah, I think he'll like drop his book and like stand up and like I don't know, probably hold like a a blasty cantrip or something. Be like, what? What happened? What? <laughs> People, what? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> Look. <laughs> <laughs> If we are in the dark, I cannot see shit, so hopefully we are not. I'm looking. Uh, you were riding, right? So yeah, you, you, you probably did, like, your light oh, spell. True. Well, he has a light cantrip, so I think he's... I think he maybe is, like, have it really dim. Mm -hmm. So that's true. Yeah, that's true. I think, like, on the back of his quill or something, he has a light that he's made into, like, a red light, so it's easier to sleep in, and he's made it fairly dim. But what? What am I looking at? What, what does this make sense? I have found with science that this is not a rock. <laughs> it's not actually a rock. And the colors change, and I don't know why. Because it has nothing to do with, with, with time. Maybe it's based on where we are in the world. Maybe it's not. I don't know, and I can't figure it out. I can't figure it out. <laughs> This is about the the not rock that they gave it's you. It's not a rock. Yes, I figured as much. It's a uh, fake rock. Uh, I'm not sure what you want from me here. Do I... you see the colors? This was blue, that was green, and that was a light magenta. And now they're all different. 
this is there's a shifting of color is uh, not outside of what I would expect. Uh, has you found any significance of the colors changing? Uh, rather than finding out why they change, find out what happens when they do. What? <laughs> is the rock heavier? Is it uh, is it suddenly warmer or cooler? Does it? Uh, uh, does it have more gravitational impulse upon it? Uh, does, does it uh, act the same if you throw it through the air? Is or it's, uh, the aerodynamics changes? Is That's what I was just wind? testing, and no! <laughs> Wait, did you hit him with the rock? Yes. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he ducked it's it on at him. The floor? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's what hit you in the chest. <laughs> this, is, this is amazing. Okay. Yeah, puddle fix Pick up the rock with mage hand, I guess. Well, uh, I don't know. Do you, what do you want to do? This I'm, is your rock. This is your experiment. You signed I'm, up for this. All right. I'm going to have Squeak look at it all night again. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean again? Pip just looks at where Squeak used to be and just like opens his mouth to speak, but. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little vindictive, but you made him stay up all night to stare at the rock. <laughs> Take that as a yes. People just snatch the rock and <laughs> go lay on it like a pillow. <laughs> Squeak, I feel oh, that. I feel like my homework assignment for Pip has uh, had negative repercussions onto you, and I apologize for that. <laughs> Right, well, uh, good luck with that. Uh, thank you for the report, I suppose. I'm glad to hear you are at least uh, uh, doodling with it. What? Damn. I'm sure it is just allergies and he's gonna leave. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to his spot. <laughs> uh, bless you. And then leaves. <laughs> <sighs> oh, I love it. Okay. All right, are we are we good to take a little break? Uh, <clears throat> yes, and I will I, not be coming back. I am no! that frustrated. <laughs> 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 oh, I see. So Squeak peaced out, so you could. Uh, yeah. Very clever. Yeah. <laughs> very good luck. Okay. All right, thank you, Austin. Yeah. Sure. Thank you for the session, Austin. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for, <laughs> thanks for making it. <laughs> Hello. 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 I have returned. Welcome back. Oh, thank you. Also, welcome, Dennis. I didn't realize you were here. I just arrived. Ooh, <laughs> quiet, oh, cool. Dennis. <clears throat> okay, we're back. This time without Austin. Rip. Rip. <laughs> Rip. Um, I don't know if I interrupted a conversation. Are you guys ready to resume? No, you're good. I think we're good. Okay, what were you talking about? Oh, just our plans that we don't Chasing want you to know. The dragon. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, besides occasionally hearing a cabbage barking in the night, uh, um, your rest is otherwise undisturbed. Um, you still end up oversleeping because your sleep schedule is a little off but um you know you wake up somewhat somewhere in the middle of the morning um talix your point of exhaustion would be gone at this point <clears throat> um nice. the first thing that pip does when he wakes up is to check the stone and the colors have not changed and he <clears throat> he seems <laughs> very interested in that discovery uh, <clears throat> and with that out of the way, uh, you're going to be spending uh, the rest of the day helping uh, uh, Durak. Um, if that is uh, uh, if that is your plan, um, he told you yesterday that the the next ship would be here in two days, so that would be tomorrow at this point. Um, 
and he will elaborate a little bit on it. Uh, um, there is a ship that's coming from uh, <coughs> from Simulianon, and it's just gonna come over. It's going to uh, unload some cargo and load different things from one of the other warehouses that are currently occupied, and then travel up to Simulianon. And he says that uh, um, even though the ship is kind of small and your group is kind of big, um, you should be all right. As long as you help him out today, and uh, he also asks for help to actually uh, uh, unload and load the cargo once the ship does get here. But otherwise, he doesn't ask for uh, monetary compensation for getting on the ship. Does that all work with you? Yeah, all is still great. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Can we make <clears throat> a manual labor check? Well, you don't have to roll, uh, but if you'd <laughs> like... No, it's fine. Um, uh, Durok kind of finds a job for everyone. Um, as soon as Tekka shows any interest in the garden, he's whisk whisked away uh, to help uh, uh, take care of the plants. And uh, um, yes. there is various pots that have broken and vines that have fallen off of there. Oh crap, what do you call them? Like on... Some some plants that need oh, like the uh, sticks trellis? to grow on. Yeah! Um, Is that the right word? I think so. Well, it sounds like a word. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 it sounds right. Yeah. Um, Brooke uh, is stuck with the heavier work, uh, while Pontifex and Pip gets, get just the lighter things. Um, are any of you interested in cooking? I'm interested in brewing. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by interest? Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> um, Dorok just asks if anyone wants to handle lunch and the dinner. It's probably best for the health of everyone involved if it is not me. <laughs> I'm more of a takeout kind of guy. <laughs> if, if nobody offers, you will take care of it. Um, and... Uh, okay. Uh, uh, oh, Talix is like sort of middle ground, uh, uh, perhaps also helping Taka <coughs> in the back. Um, by by the time that noon um, comes around, it's uh, you're done um, repairing the majority of the damage that the earthquake caused, um, and uh, Durok is just going to work on basically making a new uh, a new shelf uh, for himself. So it will be what he is focused on. Um, <clears throat> but for the most part, he leaves like all of you to just do what you can and what you're uh, able to do and whatever fits your skills best. He doesn't. Um, like he seems perfectly fine with just letting you guys run around, um, and uh, do what you can. Pip at some point is, for the most part, distracted by cabbage, and, uh, um, Durok doesn't seem to be expecting too much out of a child, so he's sort of like... He doesn't comment on it, he doesn't seem bothered as far as you can tell, but then again, it's not just too easy to, um, to read. Um, and often, whenever you're in his company, you're just in this kind of weird, awkward silence uh, that never really goes anywhere. Um, but at least he doesn't... He never gives you any reason to believe that he's, uh, uh, like, dangerous in any way. Uh, the, the initial appearance of this just really large and strong orc uh, was really all there was to it. Um, he always speaks in a bit of like a low grunt, uh, um, never really raises his voice at any point, uh, and uh, for the most part, it just lets you do your job. <clears throat> uh, Durok, uh, you wouldn't happen to know anything about the brewing, would you? I've uh, recently taken an interest in it over the past week or so, and uh, if you have any pointers, I would love to hear them. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Um. Oh. Okay. Dork silently points uh, at uh, 
one of the crates where he uh, he seems it based on the location of the crate of the crate it seems like he has put everything that used to be on the broken shelf in uh, some of those crates and uh, now he's working on just making a new shelf for them so he just points at one of them hey. you want me to look into the crate he nods okay sure he'll go crack up in the crate um as you expected there's the there's an assortment of items in here but uh, many of them appear to be books and uh, you begin to pull them out just slowly one by one um and after about 10 or so you find uh, um a book that uh, is uh, uh written in pluranon and appears to be specifically um, about making uh, beer. He's he's being very careful to not uh, salivate onto the books. <laughs> uh, the most of the yeah. remaining books appear to be about gardening. Is he perhaps equally valuable? But uh, for another time, and uh, <laughs> yeah, if he's at some point he's going to digest this whole brewing book. Okay, you kind of give up on uh, on the uh, on whatever you were working on earlier. Just uh, uh, you yeah. and Pip are <laughs> just gonna you, be off uh, him I with the dog and you with the book. His work onto Pip <laughs> and it's doing his book. <laughs> uh, well, Pip, Pip is just uh, entertained by the dog. Um, <laughs> Live so with yeah, your legs, you. Pip. I'm busy. <laughs> um, awesome. Okay. Are you... Hold on, let me look at... Uh, do I have... See? Eh, usually I have your Carter sheets open, but this time... I didn't. Um... So, you did pick up brewing supplies last time in Vera, right? Correct. I have so you're not brewing supplies. I'm not proficient. Uh, right, right. Okay. Um, and that was like a long-term goal, was to eventually get proficiency. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm going to just keep track of this, but uh, spending the day today reading this book is going to like um, help towards the objective of gaining proficiency. Perfect. Let me just write it down. Okay. Uh, is there anything else that you guys are interested in doing or talking about uh, during this day? So, uh, uh, yeah, how do ahead. you know Kirlia? <clears throat> if you don't mind my asking. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> Alright, fine. That's what I rolled. Um, he actually answers you. It's uh, he lets enough time pass where, like, at some point you think he's just not going to, um, like he has done with a lot more questions. But he went to eventually. He says, um, "She's a friend of my ex-wife." Oh. Okay, yeah, good talk. I, I'm gonna read this book. Bye. Alright. <laughs> 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 uh, somebody else was gonna say something? Uh, yeah. Tekka will walk up to the rock between uh, assignments mm -hmm. and offer one of the roots that he got from uh, Vera. I see you do not have this in your garden how do you feel about a tree uh a root that you got from vera mm -hmm. where did you I get bought, it was it from the market bought, I, no we bought a bunch of i uh, take about a bunch of local vegetables from the uh, farmers ah, from the farmers okay 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 uh, yes. Okay. I'm gonna be rolling for that too. Hi, pumpkin. Okay. 
Um, what do you want in return? Uh, Tekka will walk out to the garden and point to these like vibrant flowers. Uh, if you want to be like comparison, I compare it to the bee ball plant. It's like a herbal plant. Mm. I would like these. <laughs> we do not have these where I am from. They intrigue me. Alright. Um, after considering it for a moment, he nods and says, Take as many as you'd like. Take a will nod and uh, take two uh, from the root up. Okay. You can mark those down somewhere in your notes or on your sheet. Thank you. And you'll be taking the route. Uh, Taka, you know enough uh, um, about uh, gardening in general. Uh, it seems that what Durok has here is... Uh, um, is sufficient uh, um, to sustain him entirely. He has about uh, um, the uh, the garden directly around the house, it reaches out for almost half an acre. Um, and he has such a variety of plants that you imagine that between that and probably uh, just fishing, um, that he likely just can easily take care of himself and uh, uh, perhaps even... Uh, more than one person, but he does appear to be the only one who actually lives here. Um, and he does seem to know very well what he's doing. You've seen plants growing in his garden that uh, um, are thriving, despite not being uh, um, perfectly matched for, for the current, uh, for this climate um, and for this kind of uh, terrain. Um, yeah, you'd just be able to see, uh, you'd be able to recognize all of that. Uh. Dear Rock, this garden, was it here before your time? Uh, he shakes his head. I planted it. You have done well. Many plants I do not know. I have, have a you... lot of free time. Is it from your own travels, or have you traded with travelers like ourselves? Bit of both. I am impressed. Can I have an insight check from Tekka? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. There is no particular reaction from him. Like, uh, uh, as always, he just ends up not really like acknowledging the the comment um just keeping quiet <laughs> is it worth fishing in these waters he nods what is your bait of choice um <laughs> and well, the two of you will have a small <laughs> conversation about that. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he he's not really much for small talk in in general, but like when it, uh, um, he will speak to you both about the the garden and yeah about the the fishing as well. Um. So you might you might just be the person in this party who actually gets to uh, speak to him the most. 
Okay. Anything else for the day? Uh, uh, I yeah. think I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, Tech will probably just go fishing near the end of the day uh, after we've had like, our meal together. That's it. Yeah, okay. Uh, do you want to do a little survival check for me just to see how that goes? Sure. So, we do not need to eat rations for these days, but we do still for the day before, I think. Uh, yes, the day before, yes. Today, you are good. Um, you're, you're just going to be eating what Durak offers. <clears throat> okay, so there's one ration, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Ah, uh, Tekka, the, uh, the sea is uh, plentiful. Um, you don't go any further than the pier reaches. Um, despite it, it would be... There are multiple small boats that you could take, but, like, you, you know better. Yeah. Um, but despite not going too, too far, um, it seems that the DC has a lot to offer with just very little effort. And with the instructions you have seen, received from Durak, Durak as well. Um, today's dinner is partially provided by your efforts. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> oh, if you'd like. If you don't want to share, that's yeah. fine too. No, no, no. Of course. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I imagine that Pip would uh, <laughs> probably prefer not to. Or at least not be anywhere near you while you're fishing. Yeah. Talix will be grateful for fish. Talix likes fish? Yeah. In particular? Cool. I don't, I don't know if that's come up before, sorry. Uh, okay. That's everything. Um, during... Uh, during this night... Uh, um, this would be, let's just, uh, is Pontifex still staying up first? Uh, um, during, during the sure, night? Sure, why not? Okay, uh, so let's say it's like Pontifex and Tech and Pip and Brooke and Talix. He might spend some of the, some of the awake time reading those, like, gardening books or whatever if he finished the, the brewing one. Okay, that's actually So there's a crate full of, like, ten plus books, so he's just gonna start churning through those. <laughs> you, you moved on to the other books, too? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, 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 I guess Turok would let you. I know where they are. You cannot keep them from me. <laughs> Showed me the library. Um, you keep the, them in a box. The majority of them... Um, yeah... Is it... Well, hold on. One, two, okay. There's four of them that are in Plurnan. The rest are written in Zvard. You will um, turn through the Plurnan ones. And yeah, that, that would will... still leave you plenty. Yeah. And uh, maybe he'll dabble with the Zvard ones. He won't understand it. But, you know, mm. it's fun. You're looking at the pictures. Uh, you the, know, the, the, the Garlin ones does language, have a lot of diagrams mean you can't, like, and kind of translate it, sort of. Yeah, I get context, the feel for it. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of them that, that have just very technical language, uh, but the others are just... You, you go through them a little bit. Get a, get a feel for them. Um, okay. And yeah, it would be during Pontifex and later during Tekka and Pips's um, watch, um, where uh, in, a, in a handful of occasions, Cabbage comes over. Uh, she seems to be um, freely coming outside and just checking on you, lying down near you for a few minutes, and then going away. And she's, uh, she does that a few times during the night. Uh, almost like she's also keeping watch over you. And uh, it's the... Let me check the calendar, alright? We should be on the 10th uh, 
of Amua, uh, the fourth month of the year. Um, when you wake up and this time you're, you're, you've been adjusting your sleep schedule, so you're getting... Uh, um, you're, you're able to wake up at an earlier hour today. Um, and uh, it's around in the middle of the morning um, when a ship appears. And as you have been told, uh, um, despite the, the fact that the ship uh, um, arrives from uh, Simlielon and so has arrived from this river, uh, instead of coming straight across, um, you see that it's uh, arriving from along the, the coastline. Um, so it's arriving from the north compared to where, from where you are, uh, like coming this way. Um, and this is... Uh, uh, this is more of a keelboat than a proper ship. It's not particularly big, no longer than uh, 60 feet. Um, and it's clearly design <clears throat> designed to transport a tiny crew and uh, a small cargo. Um, it has a single set of sails that are um, currently not uh, um, unfurled. And uh, um, as it arrives and it stops uh, um, next to the pier, uh, there's going to be three people uh, leaving it. Two of them... Um, two of them are... Uh, their their light blue skin is uh, uh, covered in these sort of sort of like uh, they almost look like tattoos at first, but you know that it's just like the natural color of their skin. They're bright white, and it sort of like remind you of the foaming uh, sea waves. Um, that uh, and their uh, pointy ears seem to um, point towards a. a um, these are water genasi uh, with. Uh, some amount of elven uh, heritage. Um, one is a younger woman, the other is a, a slightly older man. Uh, the third person is an elf woman. Um, particularly, she, she, she kind of shares with uh, Dor uh, with uh, Durok the um, uh, very powerful build. Uh, and she is the one who immediately gets to work to uh, to unload the cargo uh, from the ship while the other two, um, the two water genasi go to uh, chat with uh, Durok, who quickly uh, points your group uh, uh, to go help with uh, uh, unloading the crates from the ship. <laughs> sure. <laughs> More physical labor. <laughs> I feel judged. <laughs> Fun fact says, sure, and then he just keeps on reading. <laughs> I'll guess you it says someone, here though. in this book that you should lift from the bottom. <laughs> uh, Talix, from your legs and not from your bag. <laughs> uh, Talix, uh, you have seen uh, these two water genasi uh, previously. Uh, oh. You don't know them, you've never talked with them, but you have seen them um, a few times over the years, sometimes in Aria. Um, certain people, certain uh, species of humanoids uh, tend to just uh, leave an impression. Um, you've really never seen other water genasi outside of these two, so you just kind of remember them somewhat vividly. Uh, but you've, yeah, you've never really talked to them, you have no idea what their names are. You just know you've seen the Minari a few times. Uh, I'll tell us to just give them a quick wave. Hello. Uh, but doesn't want to, like... He'll keep doing his work. As the... Yeah. As the Water Genesee woman, um... Returns the wave, uh, the other Genesee glares at you. I will say hello in Elvish as well, and just carry on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm playing English and then keep working. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, with uh, your help uh, and Brooke's help uh, and Tekka's help, uh, um. A pitch. I still picture Pip and Pontifex not assisting with this. <clears throat> um, 
the the boat is quickly unloaded and then filled back up with the different uh, crates. Um, and by the time you're done, uh, um, this tiny ship doesn't have uh, a lot of uh, space left. Um, but it seems like you you can make it work. Um, Durok comes over and he will he will shake uh, uh, Brook's hand, uh, um, and he'll say, "Good luck. Thank you for your uh, help." Thanks for setting this up. And then he shakes everyone else's hand. Uh, um, Cabbage is uh, um, still playing around you, running around, and uh, you see that Pip seems. Uh, uh, very sad to have to say goodbye to her. Well, I'm sure we'll see many more like her on our travels. Uh, yeah, you try to cheer him up. He's still, still pretty sad, but you know, eventually he will he will come with uh, um, the. The water genasi woman will be the one who is at the pier as you guys approach the boat, uh, and he, uh, uh, she, um, here we are, um, sorry, going through my notes, um, here we go. Uh, she, again, she waves at all of you, and, uh, um, her, her attention is sort of like drawn somewhere behind you for a moment and then back towards the group and she says uh, Hi, uh, Dorok said that we're uh, giving you uh, a ride to Simlielan? Yes. Yep. That's great! Yeah, I, I love when we uh, get to bring people along. We don't often uh, do that but sometimes Dorok is like uh, Can you do me this favor? And uh, that is always like Well, we shouldn't but um, glad to have you here. I, uh, my name is Nind. Nim? Oh, Nind. Nind. Uh, pleasure to meet you. We very much appreciate the favor. Though, uh, well, we have worked rather hard for it over these past couple days. <laughs> you, you have? Oh, huh. Yeah, well, you know, it's... It's all fair, paying our way. Did you feel the earth shake some days ago? Ah. Huh. All right, so it is, this is a question from the DM. Can you feel an earthquake if you're like on a, a river boat? I think you would. You would? Isn't that how a tsunami started? Well, yeah, yeah, should. um, yeah, you probably feel the waves, if anything, like on the boat, I'd imagine. Okay, just making sure I'm not messing this up, mm -hmm. then yes, she would nod. Um, and Dad and I had just <coughs> left uh, Simlielon, uh, but Ooh. yeah, we, we felt it. I imagine it must have destroyed many things. I, I, I hope that the city is okay. I think we'll be fine. I mean, it's, you know, uh, it's sturdy. Let's hope so. It is not the first shake this land has felt. Right. Um, yeah, it does, does happen... A lot, don't they? Um, and then she, she, she seems. Uh, how do I put this? Um, so Taika, um, this uh, Ninda doesn't appear to be um, put off by you. Um, she seems to be holding a conversation with you just fine. Uh, but you can tell that there's moments where she seems to be about to say something, and then she like looks up at your at your horns and like doesn't or changes the wording. Uh, and you get the idea that she's trying to be like overly cautious, like she doesn't know what's 
um, what's appropriate to say or to ask. Uh, right. So it's all, it's always like she has a question on the tip of her tongue that she never actually like ends up saying. Um, and then the the next question she she sort of like directs it at the entire group rather than just you, as she says. Uh, those happen a lot only Daria, right? Um, they just get them all the time. For as long as I've known. That's. Um. Uh, that's really scary. Just the ground shaking like that. Uh, you can't really go anywhere to avoid it. Well, as long as you're not under anything that'll fall on you. Sorry. <laughs> go ahead. Have you ever experienced one of these uh, earthquakes whilst you are on the water? It <laughs> in a problem? I'm curious um... how it interacts with the rivers and the sea. On the river, it's not so bad, but on the sea, we always get these waves. Um, we always had to just stop the boat and uh, uh, wait for wait for it to pass. Uh, sometimes the waves come uh, minutes or even hours after. Uh, so that, well, that keeps us stuck for a long time whenever it happens. I see. Oh, is it scarier here since you... You know, you can't be too far out in the water. Uh, yeah, uh, you know that, yes. Uh, good. Uh, sometimes we have to explain. Lots of people ask us why we don't just go straight uh, across uh, towards the, ri the river. And uh, yeah, we have to stay as close to the coastline as we can. How, how far out have you gone? You ever um, seen very far out there? seen anything? We never go more than 50 feet from the shore. Hmm. Just some, something I'm curious about. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm really curious about that too. I always tell Dad that I think um, that it's just stupid. It's the sea. <laughs> we are water, Genazi. We could just go out there. She refers to her dad. Is she? She's referring to the other Genasi, then. Ah, uh, that would that would be the assumption. Okay, sorry. I... Okay, yeah. Yeah, she, she hasn't really clarified it, but like, yeah, you put it together. <clears throat> All right. The man who glared at you uh, is likely mm -hmm. her dad. Is he still glaring at me? Uh, he's not here right now. Uh, he's still mm -hmm. talking to Durok. Hmm. Well, um, right. come on board. Come on. Um, we can, um, I'm just going, uh, uh Vasilian, can you, like, maybe move these barrels over here so there will be more space for them? And, uh, the, the other elf, uh, um, the other elf? The elf, <laughs> um, <laughs> does as, uh, um, as is, uh, uh, requested of her. And, uh, um, well, there is some amount of space for you guys to stand on this ship. And as soon as uh, the um, the other water genasi finally uh, walks down the pier and onto the boat, uh, um, it appears that you guys are ready to go. Um, he, uh, and, and named at this point, would have told you that his name is uh, um, Theo Theodomer. Oop, and she called the elf uh, Zillion. Um When Theodomer stands uh, behind the sails, um, you watch as he begins to um, cast a spell. Uh, he begins to speak arcane words. Um, do any of you speak Primordial? <laughs> yes. We were just talking about this, yeah. Yes, uh -huh. I do. Okay, yeah. Uh, so you understand uh, um, what he is saying? Uh, they are arcane words. He's doing magic, but the words that he's using are in primordial. Um, mm -hmm. And as he just lifts up his hands, there is very little movement to his arms, but they are just very, preci very precise, very snappy. Um, 
and uh, <laughs> seconds after he does this, the waves, uh, the, the water around the ship sort of like collects together um, behind the ship and begins to just push it forward, uh, even as there isn't uh, uh, any wind today whatsoever. And uh, the boat begins to move uh, to the north. Is a nifty trick. Um, are you saying that to him, to Theodmer? Yeah, I think he's like observing him and just says it out loud. <laughs> okay. Um. Huh? Okay. You can put your minis on the boat if you'd like. Why would we need to do that? Yeah. What are the circumstances for our minis requiring a battle? Well, your map? your minis actually need to be a little smaller. Um, you mean I'm not three times the size oh of these other people? Ba 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 ba. Um. Oh, uh, let me do this. Oop. Uh, Theodemir is the one that just did the water trick, right? Yes. You want to like group them all together so you can shrink them all at once? <laughs> Should we like put them in sure. the water so you can do that in a cluster? Where's Pip? Oh. Where's Squeak? We don't need Squeak. We need a tiny Squeak. All right, we need a tiny Squeak. We need uh, Squidosterox Junior. Yeah. Okay. Looks about right. And uh, these huge. need to be bigger. Okay. Scale up. The water looks so cool! Yeah, it's like animated! Oh, yeah. I didn't notice that at first. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, let me hide the grid from the... Yeah. Oh, it is animated. <laughs> Look yeah, at the waves! So... <laughs> They're shiny. Clearly no earthquake right now. Yep. And oh. we get uh you already know that oh, here he's it up is. here. Uh can't put him up. That's like I can't get Pip up in the crow's nest, but I know that's where he'd be. Oh. <laughs> good, good boy. It's the most tree adjacent oh. thing. This is on top. <laughs> tree adjacent thing. Yeah, it seems it doesn't have any collision. Oh, that's and sad, but we can fix manually that. Manually put him up there, yeah. Perfect. There, where he belongs. Impaled on the mast. Have given me that rock when they had the chance. What has become a squeak? Um, where is Squeak? Uh, he was on Pip. Oh, he's down right. here. He's he's in the cell. I don't know how, buddy. Now, ended up why like... would that have to <laughs> exist? <laughs> Why would you goodness. refer to it as oh, a gosh. cell and not a uh, storage? You know, guys, if mm. you clip into the ship, there's actually furnishings in here. Yeah, it's amazing! <laughs> I don't know why. The amount there's of like, detail! There's oh, like, yeah, there's yeah, like a bunch little of beds. barrels and yeah, bedrolls and cots. Yeah, like hammock cots and the table. It's hilarious because these doors are comically tiny. What are uh. these rooms for? That's gnomes. gnomes. Ah! What? I light the boat on fire. <laughs> There's gnomes. <laughs> no, the these door doors are really one to expect. All right, hold on. So, here's the ship I used, uh, um, and it does have like states, so we can actually see like inside. Uh, oh, 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 wow! So, like, if you're cool. If you wanted to see the inside, ghost. that's like what it looks like. Um, that's so clever. But yeah, I just took this off of the 
Steam Workshop. People doing good work over there. Mm -hmm. Good job, Killer Gazebo. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's a reference to the D and D story. Oh my God! You're right. What? <clears throat> what? <sighs> oh, oh, that's a classic. Does the gazebo I'll... have any weaknesses? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll... It's, it's a whole thing. We'll oh, yeah. yeah, I'll tell you after the session. It's a, uh, it's a fun read. <laughs> also, um, I really like the music. Yeah. yeah. See music. This is like the fun, relaxing part of an RPG for sure. <laughs> Definitely nothing about to happen on this ship. No. There is no. no uh, there's no grid. That means we're fine. So nothing imagine that. Uh, can I draw on this? Uh, somewhat. Uh, imagine yeah. that uh, land <laughs> is so squiggly. Uh, the land is to your right, uh, and it's never, um, it's never far from you. Uh, like she said, you're never going over a hundred feet away from it. And there's moments where uh, Theodomir actually his magic slightly lifts the boat like the water collects beneath it in order to lift it where you can see that the 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 shore is so shallow uh that this ship would actually be scraping across the bottom uh if it wasn't for his magic so they're making like this much effort uh, um to just not stray from the coastline um even to the point of physically having to lift the ship slightly uh further up uh, um, into almost into the air um, just so that they can keep this close uh, to the land um, is there anything you'd like to do on this journey learn the sea shanty <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Vizilian would actually be willing to uh, to uh, sing along uh, and teach you if you'd like so what is the name of your ship all ships have a name oh um nind is uh, um very <clears throat> very excited to uh, to answer this quickly and uh, she says oh yeah yeah um we called it arathinar she's spelled like this uh, and any of you who speak Sylvan would know that it translates yeah. to the broken wing. Oh, that is a melancholy name, but it is somehow soothing. Um, do you know the story of the raven and the wolf? Is this a theology question? It is! I do. I know all of them. I may have made up yeah. half of them. Can I roll for that? Ah, uh, yes. Yes, Religion? you can roll. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> he literally wrote a book. <laughs> oh my goodness, Talix. Um, yeah, I it's not roll that guy times. it's not often that uh, uh, Talix wouldn't know something about religion, but the fact that she mentioned the wolf uh, uh, means that this is uh, uh, it's not a oh. it's not a, a story not of uh, yeah, not <laughs> not part of your <laughs> canon. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's but different. it's something that comes from the elvish culture, uh, yeah. as the wolf is uh, um, one of the gods worshipped by elves and generally from the moon watch al uh, aligned countries and is not part of the jade pantheon. Yeah. Though the raven Hypocrisy. is. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, even as Pontifex says uh, that, yeah, he even wrote a book about it. Um, Alex is a uh, first to you. I'd love to hear it. Ah, uh, okay. So, um, there was a time when the raven was uh, tired of uh, of his job. Um, he has been watching over the living and the dead for uh, since the beginning of time, but. Um, well, I guess people can, can get bored with things, you know? Um, but the problem was that without a raven, there would have just been chaos, and uh, uh, all the dead souls would have uh, uh, 
could have been able to cross into the world of the living. Um, and so the wolf stepped in and bit one of his wings. And ever since then, the raven can no longer fly uh, too far uh, for too long and can no longer stray from the world of the dead. Um, so, you know, it's... I guess it's, uh, you know, a story about how everyone has a job to do and everyone needs to work hard and not ditch the responsibilities and Dad came up with it. Uh, um, with the name for the ship based on it because he was trying to send a message. And she just, like, chuckles a little. It's a very touching story. So, uh... You like this work? Um, she glances at her dad, makes sure that uh, he's very busy making sure that the ship doesn't scrape the bottom off uh, the beach that you're, um, you're traveling past, and she says, I hate it. I just, oh, I'm so done with it. Uh, well, what do you think you'd be doing? <clears throat> Her eyes widen a little. Um, she looks out at the horizon and says, Well, I'd be sailing into the sea. Oh, you, you want to be an explorer? Well, yeah, I think so. Maybe? Um, this, this job is super monotonous. We just like go up and down the same river all the time, many times per month, and... Uh, we don't get to spend a lot of time in either Arya or Simlielon, and uh, that makes it hard to maintain friendships. Um, so I think I'd like to travel, but also not for too long. Uh, does that make any sense? I just... I want to be it in a does. city, but then I also want to not be stuck in that city. Hmm. Do you happen to have a world point card? Um, uh, let me roll for it. <laughs> She does. Oh, yeah, yeah, she nods. This is a, a small thing, but uh, I find that uh, even though I may not have face to face conversations with people, I, in my long life I have traveled across uh, Florida and I like to keep in touch with people uh, with these things. It is more soothing than you may give it credit. Uh, if you would like, if it could help to break up the monotony of your days. Uh, perhaps on our journeys, I can send you world point cards or letters through the <laughs> world point system, however it works. Yeah. And give um, you little updates. Roll persuasion check. Sure. Uh, can I assist? We're... Uh. <laughs> we're, we're explorers ourselves, actually. Uh, well, we sort of became that way. Up, up. <laughs> Math roll with what? advantage. Okay. Probably not gonna get better, but we'll try. <laughs> oh, or I'll just. Oh, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> yeah. I am very happy that the dice went with the narrative. Um, so, she did not seem down for this at first until the moment when Talix speaks up and even if he said just like he barely added anything to it but it's like she turns towards him and says yeah yeah I'm uh I got it right here <laughs> well certainly uh we don't explore the sea we're uh we're going into the land actually well, deep into yet. the continents but uh maybe you might still find it interesting end up and she lets uh, uh, Talix uh, copy her information as she says, Yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear about you, your travels. And, uh, you know, if you do end up breaking away and sailing the seas like you dream, I would definitely love to hear your story. Okay. So, maybe with what we find, we may go with you one day. Hmm. Uh, all right. 
right. Do, do you guys offer your um, your information as well? Yeah, tell us. Well. Yeah, happily. <laughs> okay, and she oh, just. Pounds gleefully takes note of Talix's world point card <laughs> and like um as almost like an after uh, almost like an afterthought she also takes Pontifex's information ah I see what's going on here I am the third wheel <laughs> <laughs> I understand um and uh, she will just keep like making small talk, uh, um, telling you. At some point, she just like starts telling you a little bit about the journey, and it seems like a, um, almost like a speech that she has practiced a lot. Like she's just going through all these points that she um, seems to have been telling a lot of people over time um, about uh, um, the route that you're taking, um, the name of the river that you're. Uh, they will be reaching by the end of the day, which is the Smooth Point River. Uh, some mm. assorted information about it, uh, its length and its width uh, at the mouth and <laughs> at, at, at the source. Uh, um, but... Um, mm, it seems like uh, um, she's sort of like testing how much you're even interested in these details and she's trying to like not overdo it if you guys aren't like um don't seem to care tell us is interested in knowing about the land he'll he'll indulge her all right um yeah she'll talk to you uh, for a little bit until um until you, you guys hear Theodmer calling for her and she just leaps to her feet. Um, and you see that uh, she comes next to him uh, and uh, as he lowers one of his hands, uh, she instead of mimics his gesture, like um, inversely, she lifts hers. And uh, the waves that are pushing up the, the boat uh, for a moment stop and then uh, resume. And it seems that he has passed control of uh, the ship to, to her. Um, well, you guys have some free time on the ship. Um, let me bring the um, map back for a moment. Um, here. Uh, with uh, Nind uh, telling you the specifics. Uh, um, you'll be able to go all the way around uh, to the river within a day, and then it will take two more days to go all the way up and to reach Simile Elan. So it's a journey of three days. Uh, by foot, this would have taken way longer, especially if you had uh, followed the road. <laughs> Considering the two days we waited at the port, not really. <laughs> but that's fine. Um, well, you were over here, so like if you had followed one, two, three, four, five. Oh, yeah, that's true. You didn't, <laughs> yeah, you considered in two days. Yeah, you, you would have, uh, assuming nothing happened on the road, it would have been about the same time. Uh, but it is, um, it is an easier journey. Yeah. All you have to do is sit back and relax, and Te Teka doesn't even have to row. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening in the Discord? Just telling, just telling uh, Austin about the session, yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, what do we want to do these next three days? Any ideas? Uh, Pontifex, did you steal any books from Durok? Uh, I think... No, he would never <laughs> okay. steal books. <laughs> But did you ask to borrow it. any? Oh, you thought of it? I thought about it, but I was like, Pontifex <laughs> would never do that. Of all the things that are that are sacred, <laughs> he wouldn't take a man's library. Um, um, there's still a dragon chess match to be finished. Oh my gosh, oh. that's right. <laughs> yeah, Can you finish not... it in three days? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think like some, like at some point early on in this journey, Pontifex said, taken off his armor for the first time in a while and it's just like i don't know he might just be like lounging about like enjoying the sea spray and if there's a chance of a dragon chess game he's down well then 
You know what that means? I'll need... Yes. I have two inspiration ready for this. I have one. <laughs> <laughs> the number really matters. And track. As Austin said, I'm running, <laughs> rushing through my inspirations. <gasps> oh! oh off. <laughs> 29! 29. Nat 20. <laughs> Beat that! Pontifex did his own right now. more times in Pontifex is he's done playing games. <laughs> what except <laughs> for blood? That's a uh, proficiency. If you're proficient with dragon chests, it's just uh, intelligence and proficiency, right? Mm-hmm. Intelligence yeah. plus proficiency. Yeah. Oh! It's a tool proficiency. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure you literally cannot beat it, but a nat 20 would have been funny. <laughs> you want to use your inspiration? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, Matt was ready to spend both of them. Well, You're so not taking this seriously I mean? enough, Dennis. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it was expected for him to beat me. It was just surprising that I had the upper hand of the last two. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, which you means thought. that the... It was all a ruse, it is a tactic. I'm not gonna lie, Pontifex, it's been so long, I wouldn't be surprised if you changed the pieces around. <laughs> <laughs> I am offended that you would doubt my competitive integrity. Mm -mm. You, you, did, you did the proper thing where both of you wrote down your position on a piece of paper, uh, and you had a third person independently make sure that you both had it uh, right. I trust the Pontifex. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's okay. It's just me being a sore loser. All right. Uh, so the game throughout the day will progress, and it and the tides have started to turn in Pontifex's favor. Um, there is a chance you might be done with the game by the time you reach Simulion. Mm, I don't know what will happen then. It's the end of a chapter. Who knows? Maybe Brook will wait till he has less inspiration dies. It's ready to finish the game. <laughs> I am never getting rid of these. <laughs> these are pure chess operations. <laughs> They're next to my bishop for a reason. <laughs> so they are. Oh wait, no, that is kind of phallic. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't really oh, thinking about that. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, classic. TOS, TOS. Classic <laughs> shenanigans. Okay, so we know what Brooke and Pontifex are up to. Um, Paper is probably having a chat with the occasional seagull uh, that comes by. <laughs> uh, Why is it called a crow's nest? <laughs> if it's just seagulls. Um, um, there's moments when when um, uh, Vizilin is trying to climb up there, um, but at some point you just kind of accept that uh, the child has taken over. <laughs> it's pelted <laughs> by rocks. And, yep, no. <laughs> uh, anything in particular Talix wants to do? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So he's going to want to start to sit down and uh, think about how he's going to write the letter. But I think before he writes a letter to Barian Thar, he might finally write the letter to the Boobin that he's been meaning to write for a while. Uh, mostly because he's kind of uncertain about the future and he just wants to get a chance to uh... tell him how he really feels. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, well, yeah, it's gonna just be kind of innocuous, like, here's what I've been up to, here's what I've seen, you know, some of the cool stuff that's happened, um, where I think we're going, and probably won't actually talk about, uh, the trouble with the church, but might just kind of allude to it, like, uh, 
I don't know, I'll think I'll think about the exact wording later. But like uh Hope I uh, hope whatever happens we can uh meet and have a nice conversation again in the future. Okay. Um and then yeah, then after maybe getting something look out like that, he'll actually start writing the letter to Barinthar, which is just going to be uh Basically, a statement saying, yeah, I plan to, uh, you know, I'm not exactly sure what your inquiry is about, but I want to cooperate, and I'd like to meet in Simlilon, where I'm going to be very shortly. And that's pretty much going to be it. It's not going to elaborate too much. Mm -hmm. All right. You will have uh, uh, at least three days to work on it, as you will... You know, in order to actually be able to send it, you will have to be in Simlion on. Um, mm -hmm. So Talis can take his time and similarly pontifex uh, on um, his own letter that he's working on. Um, what about Tekka? Yeah, so Tekka uh, will be taking the herb that he traded, that he got from mm -hmm. the garden. And he's going to start crushing the uh, petals. Uh, and create this fragrant powder. Okay. Uh, because we are not going to be able to wash on this boat, so he's just going to, you know, sort of sprinkle that every now and then, so just allow the body odors not do that. So. Uh, does can can I see if Talix notices that by any chance? You would probably notice. I mean, Tekka's not hiding it. Uh, Tekka, what, what is that you've uh, made there? Hmm. It is something my mother taught me. I wondered if it could be used for this plant. Can you notice its smell, Talix? I'll it's very intense. The, yeah, take the. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. That's. That's nice, though. It is. I don't quite know its uses yet, but I feel it could come to use. Oh. Well. Would you like some, Talix? Uh, if you wouldn't mind, I, I'd be grateful for a sample. Do you have Talix a... Has a... Yeah, Talix has an empty vial. Okay. Which has yeah. been as of yet unused, I think. Alright. Cool. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tekka. Uh, Let me know if you find a use for it. Certainly. All right. Um, for the first stretch of your journey, uh, the first day at, uh, um, at sea. I didn't even realize there was a flag up here. I've just noticed it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, I got I got distracted by the sudden discovery. Um, uh, where am I? Where am I? Um, the weather is clear, and you see on your on your right the same sight that you've been seeing for the fa for the last handful of days. Uh, um, where just these green hills uh, reach as far um, to the to the north northeast uh, um, as far as you can see. Um, you pass here. Let me let me bring uh, the map uh, back up again. Eh, eh, eh. Hello. Oh, here we are. My bad. I forgot I had just restarted this table. Um, you pass by um, the 
the mouths of two more rivers uh, far smaller than the one you're you're going uh, towards and um, uh, around the time when you're somewhat like uh, past the second one, so roughly around this location, would be the moment when uh, directly to your right, so to the, to the north, uh, uh, north northwest of you, uh, you'd be seeing uh, running across the hills uh, dozens, no hundreds of wool bearing dogs. Um, they just cover the hills as far as you can see. Um, there's a few people among them, um, perhaps just a handful of Itarame, uh, just watching over them, and, uh, it's, um, it's a, it's a fun sight, you see them all playing together and eating the grass together, and, uh, uh, Nind waves, and, uh, uh, a few of the Itarame on the shore wave back at her. Talix will definitely, I mean, Pip's probably already noticed, but he'll definitely point it out. Yeah, Pip was like the first person to notice. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he's like the crow's nest. <laughs> yeah. Oh, those are some of my favorite sorts of people to see here on Ladaria. It's are my, I don't know, they always just seem to be... Peaceful? They're friendly, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I haven't gotten many chances to uh, talk to them, but uh, there have been a few times where they came by um, by Durak's uh, house, and um, that was fun. Oh yeah, he must be uh, must be on good terms with them. He ended up with one of their dogs. Yeah. Um. He. Well, he doesn't really talk much, um, but he did tell me that, uh, um, that one time uh, they, uh, there was this group of Itarame that stopped uh, near his place, and, uh, there were wool dogs everywhere, and one of them was pregnant, and, uh, one of the puppies got really attached to him, and they just let him keep it. I wonder if that's what happened with Jamiel. With, um... Oh, Jamiel Fleetfoot. Uh, you've, you've heard of him, right? He had a... He had a... Companion. It was one of those dogs. Um, she tilts her head to the side and she seems to think about, about it a little bit until, like, uh, um, the name finally seems to ring a bell and says, Oh, yeah, um, she... Uh, he... He has one? Uh, yeah, that's the story. I... I thought as, uh, an aspiring explorer you'd know more about Jamiel. Uh, well, I'd like to, but I don't really have a chance to uh, study things much, you know? Oh. Well. Here, I have a... I have a pamphlet. <laughs> <laughs> written by him. Not much. Um, she will... She will I... Yeah, she will gladly take it and read it. Yeah, um, I used to have one of his books back home, but that's been ages ago. I don't... Uh, maybe I could recite some of it by heart, though. I was a big fan of his, uh, of his discoveries back before I could come here myself. Like, yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear about it. Well, we could, um, sit over here. Uh, sure. Um, yeah, you'll be spending, like, the next hour basically answering your questions. <laughs> um, the, this is the part where she is <coughs> control of the ship, so you just, like, she has to keep standing. Um, and her attention just keeps going between, uh, between you and then steering the boat in the proper direction. Realizing um, that, Talix will kind of try to keep a lookout, make sure he's not, like... <laughs> Distracting her and yeah, Pip occasionally calls out and says that we're we're too far from the shore. <laughs> um, it seems that her her father um has gone to sleep, um, uh, and they'll be 
Uh, it, it seems so, you know, while one sleeps, the other will keep the, the boat going. Ooh, that's rough. Uh, I will let me let me keep this out uh, for just a little bit longer. <laughs> Pumpkin is licking my arm. It is very distracting. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, and I just need to check this, and we're good. Okay, um, and eventually, uh, by the time uh, um, the sun is, is beginning to set, uh, the the ship, the Broken Wing, has reached uh, um, the uh, the the point where uh, the the river. Uh, the Smooth Point River uh, reaches into the sea, and the ship takes this uh, um, turn to the right, and uh, will leave the sea and begin just traveling into the land back uh, uh, inside the peninsula. Um, unless anything needs to happen during the night from any of you, we can move on to the following day. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. good. Right. And here it is. Um, the following morning, um, to the to the right, to the east of you, um, you'd still be seeing uh, the same uh, uh, the same herd of uh, sheep dogs. Um, that are uh, they seem to be sort of like traveling up the river sort of like uh, in the same direction you're going basically um and for a few hours you just get to um to see them until eventually they begin to move away from the river and around noon uh they're gone again um the the river um this one out of uh, um, I guess, yeah, the one you saw that uh, reaches Vera uh, is uh, wider. Um, and it's just exceptionally big. But this river, by comparison, is slightly smaller, but it's still a very wide one. Uh, when you first entered it, when you, uh, from, um, uh, from the sea, it was um, almost uh, three quarters of a mile wide. You have a lot of water in both, di uh, in both directions and you're no longer oh. uh, sticking this close to the shore because you're just no longer in the sea. Um, so the travel is actually a little easier. Uh, the There isn't really... Um, in fact, the wind today is slightly against you, uh, but it seems that just with the with the help uh, of uh, Nind and Theodmer's magic, uh, um, the ship is just moving at a very uh, smooth and uh, uh, maintained speed. And it's... Uh, they're making it look kind of uh, uh, easy, in fact, to get this ship uh, up against the, the current of the river. Um, and it's around the middle of the afternoon um, when uh, when you hear Pip calling out. Uh, uh, through Squeak, you hear Pip's voice. Uh, um, you see that he's pointing uh, to the west compared to where you are and uh, um uh i can't do his voice but uh, he says that he's spotting something um <laughs> <laughs> and um well uh you all look uh, in, in the direction he's pointing and there's something up in the sky uh, that at first seems like a bird, but it seems a little bit too big for a bird. And then um, the realization <clears throat> it is a bird and it is a large one. And you've seen this kind of bird before. Um, the red beaks. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a red beak. And uh, uh, it is flying uh, straight in your direction. You can see that as the ship uh, turns slightly to the right at the bend of the river, uh, the bird adjusts its, uh, its course. Uh, um, and it's very clearly pointing towards you. Um, 
and no more than a few seconds after Pippa spotted it, uh, um, you see others uh, coming from slightly different directions, but overall still from like the Talix. west in general. Talix is going to yell at Pip to get down from the crow's nest. Uh, yeah, Pip will uh, quickly climb down from the boat. Um, and as the, the, the commotion kind of gets the attention of uh, Theodmer, um, he calls out, and it is in primordial, so I think only Pontifex understands it. Mm. Uh, but he calls out, uh, um, well, calls out, he says, uh, he calls for, uh, for Nind and uh, tells her to uh, go hide. And he takes over control of the ship while um, Vizilian, um quickly reaches for uh, for a nearby crate and gets a crossbow out. Um, and it seems that they um, they're prepared for this, like this has happened before. Uh, they're going through like the motions, like they know what they're doing. Hold on, that might not be necessary. Uh, give me a chance. We've dealt with this before. Yeah, uh, alright, the rest of you, just hide behind cover for a second. Um, the theorem are just replying back in, uh, uh in Plurin. Yeah, we've dealt with these before, too. <laughs> Our method you might is like my way of doing it a little better. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> yeah, what he said. <laughs> um... <laughs> he's just going to like sort of like look at you up and down. You can tell he's judging like your build. Um and um Alex will get out the amber and just brace himself. Okay. Um as the red beaks are coming closer and closer, they're closing in about a uh, hundred feet away. Uh there is there are seven of them that you can see. Um, and then they are 50 feet away and 30, they're beginning, uh, a couple of them oh. are basically, um, uh, beginning to, uh, reach the ship before the others. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, well, 30 is about the range I need. So if I get the chance, I will go ahead and use my channel divinity and try to charm them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Uh, so it's in a radius, right? Yeah. I uh, you'd like to try to get as many of them as possible in just one go. Um, so some of them will be here before the others. Uh, um, let me move to swat away because I can't show you the grid through it. Uh, um, so I'll just have to like hide this under the table. <laughs> Oh no, we have water on our floor. Yeah, it's it's uh it's flooding. Animated. <laughs> uh where is it? Center, okay. So how do I have it uh, drawn here? Eh, 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 eh. Okay. Four of them get close enough uh, um first, and the others are a little bit further back. Like this. Um, so if you're willing to wait an extra round, you could probably get all of them, but these would be upon you before... Uh, uh, like, they will have a full round of attack, basically. Uh, <clears throat> By the way, uh, before before they actually close in, Talix would like to shout at Pip, uh, be prepared to speak for me. Um, but he will go ahead and cast as soon as... He doesn't want anyone to get attacked. He'll go ahead and cast as soon as the first group is in range. Or okay. channel. Um, is it okay if we resolve all of this next session? Yeah, that's yeah. probably good. Awesome. Yeah, so we yeah. can also have Pip. Um, and we and can start with... Uh, yeah, if we can start with this. All uh, right. All right, Awesome. We're going on vacation after this. We're not. We're not gonna have a. <laughs> we're not gonna have a session for at least two weeks. For the rest of the year. For the rest of the entire year. Oh, I'll see you guys in 2022. 
Oh crap. Yeah. Yeah. A new year of possibilities and adventure! Yay! Yeah, like the last few. <laughs> <laughs> like the last half year for me. <laughs> I'm still new. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a year of D&D. &D. That sounds nice. But yeah, I guess, I guess we're calling it here. And uh, we're not playing again until 2022 i want to i guess give like an end of the year thanks to you guys for yeah for letting me be a part of this of course you have been a pleasure Hi. to to have this part of this as he i love as he really so much yes <laughs> you don't have to lie no it's <clears throat> i think what he's trying to say it's more you than pontifex you're well yes you've done what? <laughs> Oh, You've gosh. done amazing work making this character for all of his ups and downs. <laughs> he has managed really to go like the, the entire first half of this uh, uh, ship journey without telling Nin to smile. Hey, he tried to be friendly pen pals and she brushed him <laughs> to the side <laughs> she, rather callously. She thought you were flirting with her. <laughs> So he's like, okay, I see how it is. <laughs> you should probably smile more. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you. I am. I have not once uh, regretted inviting you to this, Matt. I'm really well, glad you're you. on board. Okay. You, br you bring a lot to this game. I'm just so happy that all of us are still playing together. Yeah. I'm excited to see where this goes. I cannot speak today. I don't know what's wrong with me. Ah, tiredness. The year is catching up. <laughs> no yeah, three centuries. Well, yeah. Thank you for being here today. I hope you had fun. Um, And I'll see you next year. I will see you all next year. I mean... Maybe some of us could still get together and do something if we do have time. Oh heck yeah! Play a board game board or games. Something. But mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know. Or uh, watch a movie. I'd be down. Between the years, I'm down. All right. I'm sure, we can find something. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. I'm uh, going to end the stream here. Hi everyone. Bye, lovely viewers. Bye. Bye. -bye.